Good evening, B. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, thank you. How about you, Chef A? I'm doing fantastic, thank you for asking. Are we ready for the dinner rush tonight? Absolutely. We have a full house tonight, lots of hungry customers waiting to try your delicious dishes. That's great news. I have some special dishes planned for tonight's menu. Have you tried the new grilled tuna? Yes, I did. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm sure our customers will love it. I'm glad you liked it. And how about the roasted chicken? Have you tried that yet? Not yet, Chef, but I'm looking forward to trying it. I heard it's one of your signature dishes. It definitely is. I put a lot of love and passion into that dish. And don't forget about our famous chocolate lava cake. Oh, I can never forget the lava cake. It's always a crowd favorite. Exactly. I'm so excited for tonight's service. Are you ready to dazzle our customers with your excellent service? Absolutely, Chef. I'm always ready to provide exceptional service. Let's do this. Great. Let's hustle and get this dinner service started. I have a feeling it's going to be a great night. I couldn't agree more, Chef. Let's make it one for the books. Well, we're looking at ways to optimize the database for our drug development team. Do you have any suggestions? That sounds reasonable. The drug development team is often buried in paperwork, so any way we can help them save time is a plus. That's a great idea. It would be so much easier for the team to make decisions with a clear visual representation of the data. Yes, we can't have any data breaches. We take patient privacy very seriously. Thanks for all your help, BI engineer. I'm really glad we can work together to optimize our pharmaceutical database. Speaking of which, do you have any weekend plans? Haha, <laughs> sorry about that. How about we grab some drinks after work instead? Hey B, what do you think of my new novel? It's amazing. Your writing skills are truly impressive. Thanks, I appreciate it. I'm thinking about getting it published, what do you say? Definitely, I think it's a great idea. Have you considered any publishers? Yes, I have a few in mind. But I'm still not sure which one to go with. Why don't we go over to that beachside cafe and talk about it over some coffee? Sounds good to me, let's go. So, have you thought about the target audience for your novel? Yes, I think it would appeal to teenagers and young adults. That's a good start. What genre would you classify it as? It's a romantic comedy with a twist of mystery. Interesting. Have you considered how to market the book? I was thinking of social media advertising and a book tour. Great ideas. It's important to have a solid marketing plan. And have you thought about the cover design? Yes, I have some ideas. But I'm open to suggestions. A captivating cover is crucial. We'll find the right design to attract readers. That sounds great. I'm getting excited just talking about it. I'm excited too. I think this book has great potential and I'm looking forward to working with you. Thank you. It's going to be a great journey. Hello there. Welcome to the Statue of Liberty. Would you like me to take a picture of you in front of the statue? Yes, please. That would be great. This is my first time in New York and I'm so excited to see the Statue of Liberty in person. I'm glad to hear that. Now, let's get the perfect shot for you. Would you like to stand closer or farther away from the statue? Hmm, I think closer would be better. I want to show my friends back home how big it really is. Good idea. Okay, let me snap a few pictures of you. Say cheese. Cheese. Great. Let me show you how they turned out. Wow, you look amazing. These pictures will definitely make your friends jealous. Ha uh, I hope so. Thank you so much for your help. You're welcome. Did you know that the statue was a gift from the French to the American people? Really? I had no idea. Yes, it symbolizes freedom and democracy for all. It's a representation of the strong bond between our two countries. That's amazing. I'm going to look up more information about it later. I'm glad I could teach you something new. Is there anything else I can assist you with? No, thank you. This was perfect. I'll definitely recommend you to anyone I know coming to New York. That's very kind of you, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your trip. Hey B, have you ever tried an arepa before? No, I've never heard of it. What is it? Oh, it's this amazing food from Colombia made of corn flour. It's similar to a pita bread, but it's thicker and can be stuffed with different things like cheese, meats, and vegetables. 
That sounds delicious. Where can I get some? There's a great little restaurant downtown that serves them. We should go there sometime. I'm down for that. What's your favorite kind of filling? I'm a traditionalist, so I always go for the classic combination of cheese and shredded beef. But I've also heard great things about the chicken and avocado arepas. Yum, that sounds so good. I wonder why it's not more popular here. I think it's just a matter of exposure. Once people try it, they'll definitely love it. Plus, it's such a versatile food, you can have it for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I'm excited to try it. Do you know how to make them at home? Yeah, it's actually really easy. You just mix the corn flour with water and salt to make the dough, and then cook it up on a griddle. Then you can add whatever filling you want. Wow, I'm impressed. You're like an arepa pro. Ha, huh, I've just had a lot of practice. Trust me, once you try it, you'll be making them all the time. I can't wait. Let's go get some arepa soon. Hey B, do you know what ISO 27001 vulnerability management is? Uh, no clue. Is it some kind of martial art? Laughs, no, not quite. It's actually a process used by companies to identify and manage security vulnerabilities in their IT systems. Ah, uh, got it. So what's involved in the process? Well, there are a few steps. First, you need to assess your IT systems to identify any potential vulnerabilities. Then, you need to prioritize those vulnerabilities based on their impact and likelihood. Interesting. And what do you do once you've identified the vulnerabilities? You'll need to develop a plan to mitigate the risks associated with those vulnerabilities. This could involve implementing additional security measures or patching vulnerabilities. Got it. And how do you know if your plan is working? You'll need to monitor your systems to ensure that the vulnerabilities are being addressed and that new vulnerabilities aren't emerging. It's an ongoing process. That sounds like a lot of work. It can be, but it's important for companies to ensure the security of their IT systems. Do you have any experience with vulnerability management? Not really, but it sounds like something I should look into. Absolutely. It's becoming more and more important these days as companies rely more heavily on technology. Yeah, I definitely don't want to be the one responsible for a data breach. Laughs, definitely not. It's better to be proactive and stay ahead of potential vulnerabilities. Thanks for explaining that to me, A. Hey, I feel like I learned a lot. No problem, B. Anytime. Hey, have you ever been to Cairns in Australia? Yes, I have. It was a fantastic trip. Have you been? Not yet, but I'm planning to go there soon. Do you have any tips on how to take great photos? Definitely. Cairns has some of the most beautiful beaches and landscapes. You want to capture every moment. That's true. Should I bring a tripod? If you have one, bring it. It'll come in handy for taking photos of the sunrise or sunset. Good advice. How about lenses? A wide-angle lens would be great to capture the breathtaking views. Also, a zoom lens if you want to take photos of wildlife at a distance. I see. Do you know any secret spots for photography? Yes, there's a place called Crystal Cascades. It's a hidden gem with crystal clear waterfalls and natural pools. Wow, that sounds amazing. Is it easy to get there? You'll need to hike on a trail for about 30 minutes, but it's worth it. Trust me. All right, I'll check it out. Have you tried any local food in Cairns? Yes, I had some delicious seafood at the night markets. You should also try kangaroo and crocodile meat. Hmm, kangaroo and crocodile meat? That's new to me. Is it safe to eat? Yes, they're both popular meats in Australia. Just make sure you try it at a reputable restaurant. Got it. Thanks for all the great tips. I'm excited to visit Cairns and capture some amazing photos. You're welcome. I'm sure you'll have an unforgettable trip. Don't forget to share your photos with me when you come back. Hi there, are you the owner of this seafood restaurant? Yes, that's correct. How can I assist you? I'm a local fisherman and I have been trying to improve my business by selling some of my fresh catches to restaurants around here. I was hoping to discuss the possibility of you buying directly from me. That sounds interesting. What type of seafood do you usually catch? Well, it depends on the season, but I mostly catch crabs, lobsters, and all sorts of fish such as sea bass, cod, and snapper. That's great. I'm sure my customers would love to try some of your fresh catches. Do you have any specials that you catch that are unique to your fishing grounds? Absolutely. We have some delicious scallops that are a delicacy in our region. 
We also have some great octopus and squid, which are some of our best sellers. That's fantastic. I'm definitely interested in buying from you. Let's talk more about what we can do in terms of menu offerings. Sure thing. I would love to know more about your current menu and how we can incorporate my catches into your dishes. Well, our menu is quite versatile and we offer a range of dishes from seafood salads to grilled fish fillets. We could definitely create some unique dishes that feature your catches, such as a crab-filled ravioli or a broiled sea-based season with your special blend of spices. Wow, those both sound amazing. I'm excited to see what else we can come up with. Me too. And not only will this partnership be great for our businesses, but it will also be wonderful for the local community as we support each other. I couldn't agree more. It's important to keep the local economy thriving. Absolutely. Let's exchange some contact information and get started on some menu planning. Sounds like a plan. Thanks for taking the time to chat with me today. No problem. Looking forward to working together. Hey there. How's the data analyzing going? It's overwhelming as usual, but I'm hanging in there. How about you? Any updates on the marketing plan? Yes, actually. Our numbers show that our snack sales are highest on Fridays and Saturdays. I think it's because people tend to let loose during the weekends. Hmm, interesting. Maybe we can promote our snacks more during those days. Any ideas on how to do that? Well, we could create promotions that offer a free snack with a purchase or discounts on certain items on Fridays and Saturdays. That way, people will be more inclined to buy. That's a great idea. How about social media? Are we getting enough reach there? Our social media engagement rate is pretty high, but I think we can still do better. Maybe we should partner up with some influencers to promote our products. Hmm, I like the way you think. Let's gather some data on popular influencers and see if we can work with them. Sounds good to me. Oh, by the way, have you tried the new popcorn flavor that just came in? No, not yet. Is it good? It's amazing. We should definitely promote that too. You know what? I have an idea. Let's create a taste test booth where customers can try the new popcorn flavor for free. That way, we can get people talking about it. Brilliant. I love it. Let's make it happen. Hey B, how's the backend development coming along for our Marine Ecology Database website? It's going well. I just finished implementing the search functionality for our oceanic species data. That's great. Now users can look up their favorite sea creatures easily. Did you run into any challenges? Not really. I just had to make sure the database queries were optimized for faster search results. Speaking of sea creatures, have you seen any interesting marine life lately? Actually, I went scuba diving last weekend and saw a group of manta rays swimming gracefully. Wow, that sounds amazing. We should add some information about manta rays to our database. Good idea. I'll make sure to include their physical characteristics and conservation status. Have you thought about how we're going to visualize the data on the website? Yes, I'm planning to use data charts and graphs to make the information more digestible for our users. That's a great idea, but let's make sure to keep it simple and user-friendly. Absolutely, I don't want to overwhelm our users with too much technical jargon. By the way, do you prefer lobsters or crabs? Hmm. I'm going to have to say lobsters, they're tastier in my opinion. What about you? I have to disagree, I think crabs are much more delicious. But to each their own. Haha, uh, yes, it's all a matter of taste. Speaking of taste, want to grab some sushi for lunch? Sure, that sounds great. Let's take a break and refuel before tackling more database development. Hello there. As a cybersecurity expert, it's great to discuss how we can protect financial transactions in banks. Agreed. As a security consultant, my team and I work to ensure that our clients' financial information remains safe. That's fantastic. Let's start by talking about encryption. Encryption helps protect data during transmission between two points. Absolutely. We use strong encryption algorithms like AES-256 to protect sensitive information from unauthorized access. Good to hear. Do you also have multi-factor authentication in place? Yes, we do. It's an effective way to add an extra layer of security by requiring the user to provide two or more authentication factors. Great. Another important aspect is frequent security assessments and testing. Do you perform those? Yes, we conduct security assessments regularly to identify potential vulnerabilities and improve our security measures. That's commendable. What about employee training and awareness? It's a top priority for us. 
We educate our employees on best practices to ensure they don't unknowingly open the door to a cyber attack. Fantastic. We have a lot in common when it comes to cybersecurity practices. I look forward to more discussions in the future. Likewise. As they say, teamwork makes the dream work. Together, we can keep financial transactions safe and secure. Hey B, have you ever tried Kung Pao Chicken? Yes, I have. It's one of my favorite Chinese dishes. Same here. I love the combination of spicy and savory flavors. Me too. The crunchy peanuts also add a nice texture to the dish. Definitely. Do you have a favorite place to order it from? There's a great Chinese restaurant near my house that makes it perfectly. How about you? I like to order it from a place downtown that also serves amazing dumplings. Ooh, I love dumplings too. Have you ever tried Kung Pao with vegetable dumplings? No, I haven't. How does it taste? It's a great combination of flavors. The dumplings complement the spicy chicken really well. That sounds delicious. We should definitely try that next time we order in. Absolutely. Maybe we can also try making it ourselves someday. That's a great idea. I'm always up for a culinary adventure. Me too. And who knows, maybe we'll discover a secret ingredient to make our Kung Pao chicken even better. Now you're talking. Let's start brainstorming some recipe ideas. Hi B, how are you today? I'm doing well, thanks. How about you? I'm good. Ready to get some recording done. Great. What's the plan for today? I was thinking we could start with the drums and build from there. What do you think? Sounds like a plan. Do you have any particular rhythm in mind? Yeah, I have something in mind. Let me show you. Nice. That's catchy. We could add some bass and guitar. Definitely. And some funky synth too. Sounds good. Let's get started. I think we got a solid take there. Listen back and let's see. Agreed. They listen back, yeah, that's sounding great. Just some minor tweaks here and there. Awesome. Hey, did you hear about the new cafe that opened up near here? No, I didn't. What's it like? Well, they have really good coffee and the pastries are amazing. It's worth checking out. Sounds tempting. Can we take a break after this take and go grab something to eat? For sure. Let's wrap up and go get some caffeine and sugar. Perfect. Let's make some awesome music first. You got it. No caffeine until we get the perfect take. Good evening, sir. Welcome to our restaurant. May I take your order? Thank you. I've been waiting for this dinner for weeks. What would you recommend? Our signature dish is the pan-seared salmon, served with a urban-fused sauce and roasted vegetables. It's one of our customer favorites. That sounds delicious. And what about the dessert? How about our chocolate lava cake, served with a scoop of vanilla ice cream? It's simply heavenly. That sounds amazing. I'll take both, please. Excellent choice. And may I compliment you on your fine taste in food, sir? Thank you, chef. I'm a bit of a foodie, you know. Ah, uh, then you will be pleased to know that all of our dishes are prepared using fresh, locally sourced ingredients. That's wonderful to hear. Can you tell me more about the herbs and the sauce? Of course. We use a blend of thyme, rosemary, and sage, which gives the sauce a rich and savory flavor. It pairs perfectly with the salmon. Sounds perfect. I can't wait to taste it. Your dishes will be ready shortly, sir. In the meantime, would you like to try one of our signature cocktails? Sure, that sounds great. How about the gin and tonic? An excellent choice, sir. I will have our bartender prepare it immediately. Thank you, chef. This is truly a wonderful dining experience. It's our pleasure to serve you, sir. I hope you enjoy your meal and your time here at our restaurant. I'm sure I will. Thank you again. Hey, have you heard about the recent thefts in the area? Yeah, I heard about it. The police have warned us to be more vigilant. Definitely. We can't let anyone with bad intentions slip through. Have you seen any suspicious behavior around here? Not really, but I'm keeping my eyes peeled. That's good. We don't want anyone stealing from this supermarket. It's one of the most popular ones in town. Definitely. It's always busy here. I can't imagine someone trying to steal something with so many people around. You never know. Thieves can be quite sneaky. Yeah, that's true but we're doing our best to make sure it doesn't happen. Absolutely. 
it's important to have a strong security presence, especially during times like this. I completely agree. It's better to be safe than sorry. So, any leads on who might be responsible for the recent thefts? No, not yet. But the police are investigating and hopefully will catch the culprits soon. I hope so too. We need to keep our community safe from these criminals. Absolutely. We're both doing our part to make sure this supermarket stays safe. And we'll continue to do so. Stay alert and keep an eye out for anything suspicious. You got it. We'll make sure to keep this place secure. Hello there, B. So, how do you think we can adjust the dosage for Mr. Smith's medication? Well, doctor, have you considered reducing the dosage and increasing the frequency of intake? Hmm, that's a good idea. How much do you think we should reduce it by? I would recommend starting with a 25% reduction, and if needed, we can gradually go up or down from there. Okay, let's go with that then. And how about his other medication? Should we increase the dose or frequency? Actually, I think it would be best to leave that dosage as is, but encourage him to take it at the same time every day for better consistency. I see. That makes sense. It's all about finding the right balance for each patient, isn't it? Absolutely, doctor. And with Mr. Smith's case, I believe this adjustment will significantly improve his treatment effectiveness. I certainly hope so. It's always rewarding to see patients get better with the right treatment plan. Yes, it is. And speaking of getting better, did you hear about that new health and wellness expo happening next month? I'm thinking of checking it out. Oh, really? That sounds interesting. Maybe I'll join you. I could use some inspiration for a healthier lifestyle. Definitely. It'll be a fun and informative event. Plus, we can't be advising our patients on healthy living and not practicing it ourselves, right? Huh. You got me there. All right, let's plan on going together. Thanks for the suggestion. Not a problem, doctor. It's always great working with you. Good morning, class. Today, we're going to have a fun activity. Let's all stand up and stretch. Yawns good morning, Ms. A. What's the activity we're doing today? We're playing a game of who's most likely to. It's a great way to get to know each other better. Oh, that sounds interesting. How do we play? Simple. I'll ask a question and each of you will point to the person in the room who you think is most likely to fit the question. All right. Let's get started. Okay, first question. Who is most likely to travel to all the seven continents? Points to herself. Very ambitious, B. Next question. Who is most likely to be the class clown? Points to C. Okay, last question. Who is most likely to become a millionaire? Points to D. Great job, everyone. That was a fun way to start the day. Let's get to work now. Did you hear about the scandal with insert celebrity name? No. What happened? Apparently, they were caught cheating on their spouse with their personal trainer. Oh my god, that's crazy. But honestly, I'm not surprised. Celebrities are always getting caught up in drama. Right? And it's always something outrageous like this. I mean, who cheats with their personal trainer? Laughs, I guess someone who really wants to get a good workout. Laughs, I guess so. But seriously, it's sad how hard it is for famous people to keep their personal lives private. Definitely. I can't even imagine having my every move and secret exposed to the world like that. And it seems like it's almost expected for famous people to mess up and make mistakes. Like, we put them on this pedestal and then tear them down when they inevitably fall. Yeah, it's really unfair. But at the same time, they did choose to become famous and put themselves in the public eye. That's true. But still, I can't help feeling bad for them sometimes. It must be tough to constantly have to deal with that kind of scrutiny. Oh, for sure. But at the same time, they also have access to all kinds of perks and luxuries that we regular folks don't. Yeah, that's definitely a trade-off. But still, I don't think I'd want to be a celebrity. It seems too stressful. Same here. I'd rather live a normal, peaceful life. But hey, at least we can still enjoy all the juicy gossip from afar, right? Laughs, yup, that's definitely one perk of being a regular person. We can indulge in all the drama without having to deal with the consequences. Hey B, have you thought about automating our software deployment process? Yeah, I have. I think it would save us a lot of time and headaches. Definitely. But where do we start? Well, first we need to identify all the manual steps in our current process. 
That's a good point, but I'm worried that we might miss some steps. Don't worry, we can also involve other team members and make a comprehensive list. Okay, that sounds like a good plan. Then what? We can start looking into tools that can help us automate the process. Yeah, I've heard of Jenkins, Ansible, and Puppet. Have you worked with any of these? I've used Ansible before, and it's pretty handy for automating tasks. Great, I'll check out Jenkins and Puppet and we can compare notes. Sounds good. But before we jump into automating everything, we should also make sure our testing and coding processes are up to par. Definitely. We don't want to automate anything that isn't working correctly in the first place. Right. It's important to make sure our software is reliable and solid before we start automating the deployment process. Agreed. Let's also make sure we have a good rollback plan in case something goes wrong during deployment. Good point. We should plan for the worst case scenario so we can quickly react and fix any issues that arise. You know, now that I think about it, automation can really make our lives easier. Absolutely. With automation, we can focus on more important tasks and not worry about manual processes that can take up a lot of time and energy. I can't wait to see how much time and effort we're going to save once we get this process up and running. Me too. It's going to be a game changer for us. Hey B, have you ever been to Tsukiji Fish Market before? Yes, I have. It's a great place to experience the local food culture, especially the fresh seafood. That's exactly what I was thinking. As a photographer, I'm excited to capture the colorful and lively atmosphere of the market. As a translator, I'm looking forward to interacting with the vendors and learning more about their products and culture. Let's start with some sushi tasting, shall we? Sounds like a perfect plan. There are so many sushi places here, which one would you recommend? I heard Sushi Dai is one of the best, but we might have to wait in line for a while. Waiting in line is not really a problem for me as long as the food is worth it. How about we take some shots of the sushi being prepared while waiting? Great idea. We can also interview the sushi chef and get some insights into the traditional sushi making process. Yes, and we can use our conversation as an opportunity to practice our Japanese. Definitely. After that, we can explore the other sections of the market, like the vegetable and fruit stands. And don't forget the seafood. We can take some shots of the enormous tuna and have some fun with the sea creatures' exotic shapes and colors. Speaking of fun, why don't we try the uni, sea urchin, tasting just for the experience? I'm not sure if I'm ready for it, but I'll give it a try. After all, we're here to explore and have fun, right? Exactly. Let's enjoy every moment of it and make some lasting memories. Hi there. Are you heading for a business trip to Sydney? Yes, I am. I have some meetings lined up for the week. Sounds like a busy week ahead for you. Any plans to sneak in some sightseeing? I wish I could. But business meetings and presentations are my priority. Well, Sydney is a beautiful city. Have you been here before? No, this is my first time. Great. We have some excellent tours after your meetings. You can explore the beautiful beaches, enjoy harbor cruises, or take a walk in the Blue Mountains. That sounds exciting. How can I plan it in my schedule? No worries, we can make it work. Our tours are flexible, and we can plan them according to your schedule. That's wonderful to hear. What about accommodation? We have some excellent options near your meeting venues. Would you prefer a luxury hotel or a budget-friendly one? I think I prefer something that is comfortable and affordable. Sure, we have some excellent options that cater to your needs. Once you arrive at the airport, we will have someone waiting for you to assist with transportation and check-in. That's great. Thank you for your help. I'm feeling a lot more at ease about this trip. It's our pleasure to make your business trip a comfortable and memorable experience. That's very kind of you. I appreciate your help. You're welcome, anytime. Please feel free to reach out if you need any further assistance. Have a safe flight and a successful trip. Hi B, nice to meet you. I'm a software engineer at this intelligent customer service company. How about you? Hey, nice to meet you too. I'm a natural language processing engineer here. So what's our plan today? We need to discuss how we can use natural language processing to improve customer service experience. Do you have any ideas? Well, we can use NLP algorithms to analyze customer feedback and identify common issues they're facing. That way, we can solve those problems and improve our services accordingly. That's a great idea. How about using chatbots with NLP to understand customer queries and provide more accurate responses? Yes, chatbots can definitely help us provide quick and efficient responses to customer queries. 
We can even make chatbots more personalized by analyzing customer preferences and histories. Personalization is important in customer service. We can also use sentiment analysis to understand how customers feel about our services so we can improve on areas where we're lacking. Absolutely. We can also use NLP to identify customer emotions from their conversations and redirect them to the best available agent who can handle their specific needs. That's a genius idea. Using NLP to redirect customers to the most appropriate agent should help us resolve issues quicker. Yes, and we can also automate some basic correspondence using NLP so our agents can focus on more complex customer needs. The possibilities are endless with NLP technology. We just need to create a plan and put it into action. Agreed. Let's collaborate and make this happen. Hi B, it's good to see you. We're supposed to work on how to design a highly available cloud architecture, right? Hey A, absolutely. We need to make sure our design offers top-notch performance and quick response time. Yes, that's the beauty of the cloud. We can scale quickly, but what do you think about redundancy? Agreed, we need to build redundancy into our design to minimize any chance of failure. Have you thought of using a load balancer? Definitely. It helps distribute the workload across multiple servers and ensures no one server gets overloaded. Good point. What about data store? Should we use a distributed database or cache to help minimize latency? Yes, implementing an in-memory caching layer like Radies or Memcate would be a good choice to reduce access time. That's true. We also need to consider the geographical distribution of our cloud servers to provide the lowest latency for our clients. Yes, we can do that by adding more points of presence globally so traffic can be served from the nearest server. Right, and we also need to secure the network to prevent any breach. Do you have any plans for that? Absolutely. We need to ensure that our network is secure. So we'll include firewalls, intrusion detection systems, and encryption. Great, I think our design is shaping up nicely. We need to test it thoroughly to ensure it can handle different types of traffic loads. Yes, that's the next step. We need to make sure our cloud infrastructure can handle sudden spikes of traffic and auto-scale as needed. Sounds good. With this architecture in place, our customers will enjoy high availability, quick response times, and their data will be secure. You've got it. Let's get started on the implementation and testing. Good morning, Mr. B. Thanks for joining us today. My pleasure, A. Hey. Always happy to speak with the press. So, we've heard that you have a new policy proposal. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, indeed. I'm proposing a bill that would make it mandatory for restaurants to offer free dessert with every meal. Chuckles, that sounds like a policy I could get behind. But what is the reasoning behind it? Well, A, dessert is an important part of any meal. And it's been scientifically proven that people are happier when they have something sweet to finish off their dining experience. Plus, it's a great way for restaurants to stand out and attract more customers. I can't argue with that logic. But what about the cost? Some restaurant owners might not be thrilled about offering a free dessert. Ah, but that's where the government comes in. We'll be providing subsidies for restaurants that participate in the program. And we believe that the increased revenue from extra customers will more than make up for the cost of a free dessert. I have to say, this could be a game changer for the restaurant industry. But what kind of dessert are we talking about here? Is it limited to certain options? Not at all. A restaurants can offer any dessert they want as long as it's complimentary. So, whether it's a slice of cake or a scoop of ice cream, customers will be getting a little something extra to sweeten their day. Well, count me in, Mr. B. I'll be looking for restaurants that participate in this program. Laughs, glad to hear it, eh? And I hope the rest of the public is just as excited about this proposal as you are. Absolutely. Thanks so much for sharing your ideas with us today, Mr. B. It was my pleasure, eh? Thanks for having me. Good morning, Chef B. Are you excited to create a new menu for our high-end restaurant in Geneva? Absolutely, A. Hey. I've been researching local Swiss ingredients and came up with a few ideas for the menu. Fantastic. I'd love to hear them. I was thinking of starting with a traditional Swiss cheese fondue made with Gruyere cheese and serving it with freshly baked bread and locally grown vegetables. That's a great idea. What about the main course? For the main course, I'd love to prepare a pan-seared Swiss salmon with a side of roasted Swiss chard and quinoa salad. That sounds delicious. And for dessert? For dessert, we have to showcase the best of Swiss chocolate. How about a decadent chocolate fondant served with a scoop of locally made vanilla ice cream? Wow, our customers are going to love this menu. We should also consider pairing each dish with a local Swiss wine to complete the experience. 
Definitely. I think we should go for a light-bodied Pinot Noir to match the salmon and a sweet Riesling to go with the chocolate. You're a culinary genius, Chef B. Let's get started on creating our masterpiece menu. Hi B, thanks for coming in today to discuss the design plans. How do you like the room so far? Hi, it's looking great. I really love the color scheme you've chosen. I'm so glad to hear that. So I have a few different design concepts I've been working on. Do you have a preference? Hmm, they all look really good. But I'm leaning towards the more modern design approach. Perfect. That's actually my favorite too. So let's talk about some specific details. What do you think about incorporating some fun lighting fixtures? I love that idea. Maybe even something funky like neon lights? Yes, absolutely. And we could also add some bold patterns to the upholstery to really make it pop. Sounds great. I'm very excited to see the end product. Me too. It's going to be amazing. And don't worry, I'll be sure to keep the budget in mind while we work on this. Thank you, I really appreciate that. I have a feeling this design is going to impress all of our guests. Yes. And who knows, maybe it'll even make some headlines in the design world. Haha, uh, wouldn't that be amazing? All right, let's get started on this project. Hey B, have you ever tried enchiladas? Enchiladas? Yeah, of course. Who doesn't love a good enchilada? That's right. I had some last night, and they were simply amazing. What kind of enchiladas? Were they beef, chicken, or veggie? They were chicken. Do you prefer beef or chicken enchiladas? Honestly, I can't decide. They're both so delicious. I agree, but I tend to go with chicken more often. I think it just adds a little something extra to the dish. Absolutely. And don't forget all the toppings that go with it, cheese, onions, salsa, sour cream. Yes, those are all necessary toppings in my opinion. Did you know that enchiladas originated in Mexico? Yes, I did. They're now popular all over the world, and I can see why. They're a perfect comfort food. Definitely. And what about the tortillas? Soft or crispy? I like them both ways, but soft tortillas are my favorite. The way they soak up all the flavors is just perfect. I'm a crispy tortilla person myself, but you can't go wrong with either one. Agreed. Now I'm craving some enchiladas. Same here. Let's go grab some after work. Sounds like a plan. You know what they say, never say no to a good enchilada. Hi B, good to see you. Do you have any fancy tips on how to manage employee data? Hi, you bet. As a database administrator, I have some tricks up my sleeve. That's great, B. As a backend engineer, I can contribute my end of the job. So, what is your suggestion? Well, first of all, gathering all data in one place is necessary. That means a centralized database. That makes sense. We don't want to lose anything, so what kind of database do you propose? A relational database. It allows us to organize employee data into tables and apply relationships to connect each data entry to its related ones. Great. How about ensuring security and accessibility of the data? Let's add an authentication and authorization system that ensures users can only access what they are supposed to access. That's a clever idea. It will keep the data secure while giving the management team access to everything they need when they need it. Exactly. We can also input the employee data in various languages, making it more efficient for the HR team. I didn't think of that. Great insight, B. Last but not least, we should make sure that the data processing speed is high. We don't want to spend hours waiting for the data to load up. I completely agree. All right, let's put in these suggestions and see what management thinks. I agree. I think this will make our data management fast and reliable. Nice discussion, B. Thanks for sharing your expert knowledge with me. Anytime, A. It's always fun to brainstorm solutions with a fellow techie. Hi there, what a beautiful day to be in the park. Indeed, the sun is shining and the birds are singing. Perfect for a creative conversation. Absolutely. Speaking of creativity, how do you think literature can convey thoughts and emotions effectively? I find that poetry can be a great tool. It uses fewer words, but with the right ones, it can evoke strong emotions. Interesting point. I think prose has its advantages too. It can build a more comprehensive narrative and deliver a clear message. Yes, but there's also something to be said for the ambiguity of poetry. It can leave room for interpretation and add depth to the meaning. I see what you mean. What about when it comes to complex concepts or controversial issues? 
Well, literature can be a means to explore these issues in a more accessible way. It can help people connect with different perspectives and stimulate critical thinking. Definitely, and it can also inspire empathy and compassion towards others by sharing their experiences. Yes. Literature has the power to evoke strong emotions and create lasting impact on people's minds and hearts. I couldn't agree more. It's amazing how words can change attitudes, beliefs, and even shape the course of history. Absolutely. Whether it's through poetry, fiction, or nonfiction, literature has the power to move and inspire us like no other medium. Well said. Let's keep the conversation going and continue exploring the endless possibilities of literature. Right on. I can't wait to see where our creativity takes us next. Wow, the underwater world in Okinawa is truly stunning. There's so much to see here. Yes, indeed. It's one of the most popular destinations for diving and snorkeling in Japan. Have you spotted any interesting marine life yet? Yes, I saw a school of neon-colored fish swimming by just a few seconds ago. It was mesmerizing. Oh, I love watching those. They're called parrotfish. Did you know that they actually change their sex during their lifespan? Really? That's so interesting. I didn't know that. What else can we expect to see down here? There are plenty of sea turtles, moray eels, and even some well-hidden octopuses if we're lucky enough to catch them. I've always been a fan of observing the coral reefs. They're so stunningly colorful. Yes, the coral reefs are definitely something you don't want to miss. They come in different shapes, sizes, and colors. Do you know that they're also considered the rainforest of the sea? I heard that before. They are a vital habitat for many marine species. Speaking of which, do you know if there's a way we can help preserve the marine life and environment here? Yes, absolutely. There are many ways. Some include not touching or stepping on the coral reefs, not feeding the fish, and being mindful of our trash and waste disposal. Got it. I'll make sure to keep those things in mind. Thank you for the insightful tips and for making this diving experience a memorable one. It was my pleasure. I hope you enjoyed your time here, and perhaps you'll come back again to explore some more of Okinawa's underwater world in the future. Hi there, I'm a travel consultant, and I have some clients who would like to rent a car for their trip around Melbourne. Can you help me out? Of course, I'm happy to help. What kind of car are they interested in? They are thinking of something comfortable and easy to drive, but also with enough space for luggage. Any suggestions? I would recommend a mid-sized SUV, like a Kia Sportage or Hyundai Tucson. They are spacious, reliable, and comfortable to drive. Great, that sounds perfect for them. And do you have any travel tips for them? They want to explore the city and its surroundings. Absolutely. Melbourne has so much to offer. They could start by visiting the Queen Victoria Market, then take a drive down the Great Ocean Road to see the Twelve Apostles. That sounds like an amazing trip. Are there any other places you would recommend? Yes, they could also visit Yarra Valley for some wine tasting and balloon flights, and Phillip Island to see the famous Penguin Parade. Wow, those are all great suggestions, thank you. And do you offer any additional services, like GPS or car seats? Yes, we have GPS available for an extra fee, and we also provide car seats free of charge for children under 7 years old. Perfect, I'll let my clients know about that. Thank you for your help. You're welcome, happy to assist. Have a good day. Hi there, I noticed you're the manager of this supermarket. I'm the janitor. My name is Tim. Nice to meet you, Tim. My name is Jane. So, what brings you to the staff room? Well, I was just taking a break, and it reminded me of something I wanted to bring up with you. Sure, what is it? I've noticed that some customers tend to litter, and it makes my job harder. Maybe we could put up some signs reminding people to dispose of their trash properly? That's a good point, Tim. It's important to keep the environment clean, not just for our own benefit but for the planet too. Yes, and I think it would be helpful to have a designated area for customers to put their trash in. Agreed. We can place bins at strategic locations around the store to make it easy for them. That's a great idea. Also, I've noticed that some of our employees tend to leave the break room in a mess. Would it be possible to remind them to clean after themselves? Absolutely, Tim. I'll make sure to have a meeting with the staff and emphasize the importance of keeping the staff room clean. Thank you so much, Jane. I really appreciate it. No problem, Tim. We're all in this together. Our goal is to provide the best experience for our customers while keeping our workplace clean and safe. You're right. And I'll make sure to do my part as well. That's great to hear. It's always helpful when everyone takes responsibility for maintaining a clean environment. 
definitely. I feel like we're on the same page, and I'm glad to work with someone who shares the same values. Likewise, Tim. It takes a team effort to make a positive impact. Hi there. I'm excited to work with you on this project. I'm a data scientist, and I've been wanting to apply machine learning to healthcare. Nice to meet you. I'm a machine learning engineer, and I specialize in predictive modeling. So we're a perfect fit. Yes, definitely. So, what kind of medical data do you have for us to work with? We have electronic medical records from various clinics that include patient demographics, diagnostic codes, lab results, and medication history. Wow, that's a lot of data. We can definitely use that to build predictive models. Exactly. I think we should start with a logistic regression model to predict the risk of a patient developing heart disease. Sounds good. But what features should we use to train the model? We can use age, gender, smoking history, hypertension, diabetes, cholesterol level, and family history of heart disease as predictor variables. Okay, let's get started then. Hey, did you know that every year, over 17 million people die from cardiovascular disease worldwide? That's a scary statistic. But if we can predict the risk of heart disease, we can prevent it. That's the goal. We can also use the same model to predict the risk of other diseases like stroke, diabetes, and cancer. Absolutely. And machine learning algorithms can always be updated and improved so we can keep refining our models to get even better results. This project just keeps getting more exciting. I'm looking forward to working with you and making a difference in healthcare. Hey, have you seen our friend's posts on that online marketplace? Yeah, I have. She's been selling so many things lately. I know, right? I feel like I need to start decluttering my apartment too. Same here. I've been eyeing this cute pair of shoes she's selling, but I haven't made up my mind yet. Oh yeah, those are really adorable. Have you tried asking her any questions about them? No, not yet. I'm a little nervous to ask her about them for some reason. Don't be silly, she's our friend. Just shoot her a message and ask if they're still available. Okay, you're right. I'll do that today. Okay, I just messaged her. Fingers crossed that she still has them. Nice. Let me know if she replies. Yes. She still has them, and for a good price too. I'm going to buy them. Yay. I'm so glad you get to treat yourself to something nice. Okay, I just bought the shoes. Can't wait to wear them. Awesome, now you can flaunt your new kicks around town. This marketplace is dangerous for my bank account, but I can't resist such great deals. I totally get it. I've already bought a couple things too. Thanks for encouraging me to message our friend about those shoes. I'm so happy I bought them. Of course. I'm always down to support my friends and their hustles. Good morning. How are you today, Driver B? I'm doing well, thank you. I'm excited to take you to Bangkok today. Have you ever been there before? Yes, I have. I love the food there, especially the Pad Thai. Do you have a recommendation for a good spot to try it? Absolutely. There's a night market called Papong that has amazing street food, including Pad Thai. But be careful, it's a bit touristy. Thanks for the tip. I'll make sure to check it out. Do you listen to music while driving? Yes, I do. I like to listen to classic rock, like the Beatles and Led Zeppelin. I love the Beatles too. What's your favorite song of theirs? That's a tough one. But if I had to choose, it would be Hey Jude. What about you? I think my favorite is Let It Be. It's such a beautiful song. Yes, it is. Speaking of beautiful, have you ever been to the Grand Palace in Bangkok? Yes, I have. The architecture is stunning. What about you? Have you been there? I have, but I prefer the Wataroon Temple. It's right by the river and has a great view. Oh, that sounds nice. I'll have to add it to my list of places to visit this trip. Definitely do. And if you have time, I also recommend taking a boat ride on the Chow Phraya River. It's a great way to see the city. Sounds like a plan. Thanks for all your recommendations, Driver B. You're a great tour guide. My pleasure, Customer A. I hope you have a wonderful time in Bangkok. Hi there, I'm the backend engineer. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm the database administrator. Nice to meet you too. So, let's talk about managing the employee data. What do you think is the best approach? Hmm, well, I think we should start by organizing the data by department and then by job title. That's a good idea. But what about the data from remote workers? 
We could create a separate category for them and then use VPN to access their data. Interesting. Do you think we also need to consider data security? Definitely. We should use encryption and ensure that access to the data is limited to authorized personnel. Right. And what about data backups? We can set up automatic backups to ensure we don't lose any important data. Great. What about data processing speed? Do you think we need to worry about that? It depends on the number of employees and the amount of data we need to manage. We might need to upgrade our server if we find it's lagging. Got it. Should we also consider data visualization tools to help us analyze the data? Yes, that would definitely be helpful. We could create dashboards to keep track of important metrics. How about data validation? Should we have a system in place to check for inaccurate or incomplete data? That's a good point. We could create a validation system to ensure the data is accurate and up-to-date. Okay, so we have a lot of things to consider. Should we prioritize any of these tasks? I think data security should be our top priority. We don't want any sensitive employee data to be leaked. Agreed. Let's start with that and then move on to the other tasks. Thanks for your input. No problem. Happy to help. Let's make sure we have a well-managed and secure employee data system in place. Good morning, sir. I'm from the immigration office. Could I see your passport, please? Sure, here it is. I just want to ask if there is any update about the entry requirements. Well, there have been some changes recently. You might want to check the government website for the latest updates. Thanks for letting me know. I'll definitely do that. Great. I also noticed that you don't have a return ticket. Do you have plans to stay here for a long time? No, not really. I'm just waiting for my next flight schedule. Is that going to be a problem? It's not a problem, but I suggest that you book a return ticket before your arrival next time to avoid any inconvenience. That's very helpful. I'll keep that in mind. Now, let me stamp your passport with the arrival date. Welcome to our country. Thank you very much. By the way, do you have any recommendations for tourist spots and restaurants here? Of course, we have a lot of amazing spots to visit and delicious food to taste. Do you have any specific preference? I'm open to any suggestion. I want to try your local delicacies. Okay, you should try our national dish called adobo. It's made of chicken or pork, soy sauce, vinegar, and other spices. You should also visit our historical landmarks like Intramuros and the National Museum. Wow, thanks for the suggestions. You make me more excited to explore your country. That's great to hear. Enjoy your stay and feel free to ask me or any of my colleagues if you need any assistance. Will do. Thanks again for your help. Have a nice day. Have you ever tried moussaka? Oh, is that the Greek dish with eggplant and ground meat? Yes, that's the one. It's quite famous for its rich flavor and creamy texture. I'm not sure if I would like it. I've never been a big fan of eggplant. Oh, don't worry. The eggplant is just a small part of it. The flavor actually comes from the seasoned ground meat and the creamy bechamel sauce. Hmm, that sounds interesting. Can you recommend a good place to try it? Well, if you're feeling adventurous, I know a cozy little Greek restaurant downtown that serves the best moussaka. I promise you won't regret it. All right, let's give it a try. But what should we eat it with? Moussaka is usually eaten with a side of salad or some fresh bread. You can even pair it with some Greek wine for a real Mediterranean experience. That sounds amazing. I can't wait. Thank you for introducing me to this dish. My pleasure. Moussaka is one of my favorites, and I love sharing my love for food with others. Let's go and indulge ourselves in some delicious Greek cuisine. Good morning. How can I assist you today? Hi there. I'm looking for a book on cooking some exotic dishes. Do you have anything in mind? Absolutely. We have a great selection of cookbooks. Are you interested in something specific like Indian, Thai, or something else? Hmm. Maybe something from the Mediterranean? Okay, great. You might want to check out The Mediterranean Diet by Maria Mazzari. It's a popular read. Sounds good. Can I use my library card to check it out? Of course. Do you have your library card with you? Yes, here it is. Perfect. Let me just check if the book is available. Yes, it is. Here you go. Thank you. Is there any other book that you would recommend? How about Mastering the Art of French Cooking by Julia Child? 
It's a classic and perfect for anyone who wants to learn more about French cuisine. Wow, that sounds interesting. I heard that the recipes are complicated though. Yes, some of them are, but it's worth the effort. Cooking is all about experimenting, isn't it? Yes, that's true. Thank you for your help today. No problem at all. Let us know if you need any assistance in the future, and have a great day with your new books. Hi coach, how's it going? It's going great. How about you, athlete? I've been training hard and I'm looking to improve my skills even more. Can you help me out? Of course I can. What specific skills are you looking to improve? Well, I've been struggling with my speed and agility. Do you have any tips for me? Absolutely. One thing that can help with speed is working on your sprinting form. We can also work on drills that will improve your quickness and reaction time. That sounds great. And what about agility? Agility drills can be really fun. We can set up a course with cones and work on your footwork and agility. That sounds like it would be challenging, but also a lot of fun. Definitely. And remember, it's important to focus on technique rather than just speed. Good form will help you improve in the long run. Gotcha. Thanks for the advice, coach. Anytime. And don't forget to stretch before and after our training sessions to prevent injuries. Will do. See you next time, coach. Take care, athlete. Keep up the good work. Hi there, it's nice to meet you. I'm excited to work on building a scalable data processing system together. Hi, it's great to meet you too. Definitely looking forward to diving into this project. So, I was thinking of using Apache Kafka as a message broker. What do you think? That's a great idea. It's a reliable, distributed messaging system that can handle a high volume of data. But we also need to consider the storage aspect of things. Exactly. For that, I was thinking of using Amazon S3 for object storage, as it's highly available and durable. Good choice. But what about processing and querying the data? For processing data, we could use Apache Spark or Flink as they can operate in a distributed environment. As for querying, we could use Elasticsearch. I agree, Elasticsearch is a solid option for searching and analyzing data. How about monitoring and managing the system? We could use Prometheus for monitoring and Grafana for visualizing the data. And for managing the system, we could use Kubernetes. Those are great choices. Kubernetes is a powerful tool for managing containers at scale. Yeah, I've used it before and it's definitely a game changer. Overall, I think we have a good plan for building a scalable data processing system. Absolutely. I'm excited to get started on this project with you, A. Eh? Hey, have you ever heard of ISO 27001 Business Continuity Plan? Yeah, I think I have. It's about ensuring business operations can continue in case of unforeseen circumstances, right? That's right. It's all about being prepared for emergencies so that we can avoid major disruptions in our work. Sounds good to me. How does it work exactly? Well, it's basically a plan that outlines the steps we need to take in case of a crisis, like a power outage or a cyber attack. Ah, uh, I see. So, do we already have a plan in place? Yup, we do. But we need to update it regularly and make sure it's effective in helping us handle any situation that comes up. Gotcha. One question though, how do we know if it's working? We should do a test run every now and then to make sure everything runs smoothly. It's better to be safe than sorry, right? Definitely. Have we ever had to use the plan before? Not yet, but it's good to know we have it in case we need it. I agree. It's important to be prepared, especially in the age of technology and cyber threats. Absolutely. That's why it's also important to invest in a good cybersecurity system to protect our data. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I heard there are different levels of certification for cybersecurity. Have you heard of them? Yes, I have. One of the most recognized ones is the CISSP certification. Interesting. What does that stand for? It stands for Certified Information Systems Security Professional, and it's a globally recognized certification in the field of cybersecurity. Wow, that sounds impressive. Maybe I should consider getting certified too. You definitely should. The more we know about cybersecurity, the better we can protect ourselves and our work. Thanks for the tip, A. Eh? No problem, be safety first, right? Good afternoon, Chef B. It's great to be here at this Michelin-starred restaurant in Geneva, Switzerland. Good afternoon, A. Eh? It's my pleasure to have you here. So, Chef B, tell us about Swiss cuisine. What makes it unique? 
Swiss cuisine is a blend of various influences from neighboring countries such as Germany, France, and Italy. We have a lot of hearty dishes made with cheese, potatoes, and meat. That sounds delicious. What dish would you recommend for someone who has never tried Swiss cuisine before? I recommend trying our classic cheese fondue made with emmental and Gruyere cheeses. It's a great way to experience the flavors of Swiss cheese. Yum, that sounds amazing. How about the cooking techniques used in Swiss cuisine? Are there any special techniques? Yes, Swiss chefs tend to use traditional methods when cooking. For example, we use a lot of slow cooking techniques and techniques that require a lot of attention to detail. Can you give us an example? Sure. When making Swiss chocolate, we need to temper the chocolate to ensure that it has a glossy finish and a nice snap when you break it. Wow, I didn't know that. What's your favorite Swiss dish to cook? My personal favorite is Rosti, a Swiss-style hash brown made with grated potatoes. It's simple to make but requires a lot of attention to detail to get it just right. That sounds delicious. I'll definitely have to try that. Thank you for your time, Chef B. Thank you for coming, A. It was my pleasure to have you here. Hey, how's everything going around here? It's going pretty good, thanks. How about you? Can't really complain. Have you heard about the recent push for more environmentally friendly energy development? Yeah, I have. I think it's a great idea, but it's a balancing act between protecting the environment and meeting the world's energy needs. Yeah, that's definitely a challenge. But, there are some pretty innovative solutions out there. Have you heard about the underwater turbines that generate electricity from ocean currents? I have, and I think they're really interesting. But, we have to make sure that their installation doesn't harm marine life. Of course, that's important. But, have you considered the fact that we are already impacting the environment with our current energy sources? You're right. We have to find ways to minimize our impact and move towards more sustainable practices. Exactly. And, it's not just about finding new sources of energy, but also about reducing our energy consumption in our daily lives. Yeah, renewable energy is great, but we need to focus on energy efficiency as well. Small changes in our habits and technology can make a big difference. Absolutely. And, as engineers, we have a responsibility to use our skills and knowledge to create solutions that protect the environment while still meeting our energy needs. I couldn't agree more. We need to find that sweet spot between progress and preservation. Yep, it's all about balance. But, luckily, we're up for the challenge. Good morning, B. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. How about you, A? Not bad. So, let's get started. What brings you in today? I have a contract dispute with my landlord. I think I have valid grounds for terminating the lease. Okay, we can definitely help you with that. By the way, do you have any weekend plans? Hmm, not yet. Why do you ask? Well, I'm organizing a hiking trip with some friends, and I thought you might be interested in joining us. That sounds like fun. How long is the hike? It's a 10-mile trail, so it'll be a bit of a workout but the scenery is breathtaking. Count me in, then. Thanks for inviting me. No problem, it'll be great to have you. Now, back to your case, let's go over the details. Sure. I have documentation proving that the landlord breached the lease agreement. Perfect, we can use that as evidence in court. And don't worry, I'll make sure to keep you updated every step of the way. I really appreciate that. By the way, have you been following the latest season of Game of Thrones? Absolutely. Can't wait to see who ends up on the Iron Throne. Who's your favorite character? I have to say Tyrion Lannister. He's witty, charismatic, and always manages to surprise me. Yeah, he's definitely a fan favorite. Personally, I'm rooting for Jon Snow. He's been through so much, I think he deserves a happy ending. Let's hope the writers agree with you. Anyway, we should probably finish up here. Thanks again for your help, eh? Anytime, B. And I'll see you on the hiking trail this weekend. Hey mate, how's the fishing going? Hi there. Not too great, haven't caught anything yet. What about you? I've caught a couple of fish already. Would you like some tips? Yes, please. I'm not used to fishing in this area. Sure thing. Make sure your lure is bouncing off the bottom, and try using a light jig head. Thanks for the advice. What kind of fish have you caught? Some bream and a flathead. They're pretty common around here. Oh wow, I've never caught a flathead before. Any tips for catching them? Yeah, try using live bait like worms or prawns. 
and make sure your line is nice and tight. Thanks, I'll definitely give that a go. So, how long have you been fishing here? Oh, years. This is one of my favorite spots. It's so peaceful and relaxing. I can definitely see why. The scenery is beautiful. Have you ever caught anything unusual here? Well, there was one time I caught a stingray. Really? That must have been exciting. It sure was. But I had to be really careful releasing it back into the water. I can imagine. Safety first, right? Of course. It's important to always be respectful of the ocean and its creatures. Definitely. So, how many fish do you usually catch in a day? It really depends on the day and the weather. Sometimes I catch nothing, and other times I catch a ton. It must be nice to have the ocean as your backyard. It sure is. It's my escape from the daily grind. I can see why. This is such a relaxing and peaceful activity. It definitely is. And there's nothing like the satisfaction of catching your own dinner. I'll have to take your word for it. I still haven't caught anything. Don't worry, mate. You'll get the hang of it. Just keep at it and you'll have your own fishing stories to tell. I can't decide what to order. Everything looks so good. I know, right? The menu here is huge. I'm thinking about getting the steak, but it's a little expensive. Why don't you get the chicken? It's cheaper and just as good. That's a good idea. Thanks for the suggestion. No problem. I always enjoy helping my mom and dad make the right choice. So, how was school today? Did you learn anything interesting? We learned about volcanoes and how they erupt. It was really cool. Wow, that does sound interesting. Did you know that your dad and I went to Hawaii and saw a real volcano? No way. That's so cool. I want to go too. Maybe one day we can plan a family vacation to Hawaii. Yay. That would be awesome. Can we go to the beach and go surfing too? Of course, we can do all kinds of fun activities on vacation. So, did you hear about the new coffee shop that opened down the street? No, I haven't. What's it called? It's called The Daily Grind. I heard they have amazing coffee and pastries. We should go there this weekend. I love trying new places and their coffee sounds delicious. That sounds like a great idea. We can make a day of it and explore the neighborhood too. Yay! I can't wait to try their lattes and scones. Well, let's enjoy our dinner first. I'm starving. Hi there. Can I take some pictures of you while you climb up that wall? Sure thing. Always happy to have some photos of me doing what I love. Awesome. This view of the Blue Mountains is spectacular. It's perfect for some breathtaking shots. Yeah, it's one of the reasons I love climbing here. The view never gets old. It certainly doesn't. So, how did you get into climbing? I've been interested in it since I was a kid. Something about the thrill of scaling a mountain just drew me in. I can definitely see why. It's such an adrenaline rush watching you climb. Thanks. It's definitely a challenge both physically and mentally, but that's what makes it so rewarding. I imagine it must be difficult to capture the perfect shot while you're climbing. How do you manage it? Well, it's definitely a balancing act, but I try to hold my position long enough for you to get the shot. You're a pro at this. I can't believe how high you've climbed. Yeah, it takes a lot of training and practice to get to this level, but it's all worth it. I can see that. These pictures are going to be amazing. You're a natural in front of the camera. Thank you. It definitely helps to have a gorgeous backdrop like this. No doubt about it. You make it look so effortless. Well, I wouldn't say it's effortless, but I definitely love what I do. And it shows in your work. Can't wait to see the final photos. Thanks again for letting me capture your passion. Good morning and welcome to Sydney International Airport. My name is A and I am a travel planner. How can I assist you today? Hello A. I am here on a business trip and need some help organizing transportation and accommodation. Of course. How long will you be staying in Sydney and what kind of transportation do you prefer? I will be here for five days and would like a car rental. Can you recommend any reliable car rental services? Absolutely. We work with several trustworthy car rental companies such as Avis and Hertz. We can help you compare prices and choose the best option for you. That sounds great. Also, I need a hotel within close proximity to my meetings. Can you suggest any options? Sure, we have a number of hotels nearby that will suit your requirements. 
Some recommended ones are the Weston, Intercontinental, and Sheraton. Excellent. While I am here, I would like to visit some of Sydney's famous landmarks. What would you suggest? You must visit the Sydney Opera House, Sydney Harbour Bridge, and the Royal Botanic Gardens. They are all iconic attractions and definitely worth seeing. Sounds like a plan. Thank you for your assistance, eh? You're welcome. If you need any further help during your stay, feel free to contact us. Enjoy your time in Sydney. Good afternoon, welcome to this famous restaurant in Sydney. I am your tour guide for today, A. Nice to meet you, A. My name is B, and I'm the restaurant manager here. We're so excited to have you and your guests. Thank you so much, B. Could you tell us a bit about the history and culture behind this restaurant's cuisine? Of course, our restaurant specializes in modern Australian cuisine, which incorporates a mix of French, Asian, and Mediterranean influences. We also use the freshest local ingredients to create our dishes. That sounds delicious. Can you recommend any signature dishes to our group? Absolutely. One of our favorites is our grilled barramundi with lemon herb butter and roasted vegetables. It's a perfect example of how we combine local ingredients with international flavors. Yum, that sounds amazing. What about the drink menu? Do you have any Aussie beer or wine that you would recommend? Yes, we carry a variety of Australian wines that pair perfectly with our dishes. I highly recommend trying our Shiraz, which is one of the most popular red wines in Australia. That is definitely something to try. Thank you for the recommendation, B. Do you have any desserts that we must try? Our sticky date pudding with salted caramel ice cream is a must-try dessert. It's the perfect way to end your meal. It all sounds so delicious. I think I might have to try everything myself. Thank you so much for the amazing hospitality, B. It was my pleasure. I hope you and your guests thoroughly enjoy your meal and have a wonderful time here at our establishment. Thanks again, B. We'll definitely come back again next time we're in Sydney. We'd love to have you back anytime. Hey there. How's your day going? Not too bad, thanks. I've just been working on some program development. How about you? Same here. I just finished a project on Python. What language do you usually use? I'm a fan of JavaScript. It's really versatile and can be used for both front-end and back-end development. That's true. I've always found it a bit tricky to learn, though. How did you get the hang of it? Practice and tutorials, mostly. Once you get the basics down, it's really just about creating and troubleshooting code. That's good to know. I've been using online courses to learn different languages. Have you tried those before? Yeah, they can be really helpful if you choose the right ones. It's important to make sure they have good reviews and a clear curriculum. That's definitely true. I've also found that working on real-world projects helps me learn even more. Absolutely. It's one thing to study the theory, but applying it in practice is where the real learning happens. Have you ever worked on any collaborative projects before? Yeah, I've worked on a few. It's great to bounce ideas off of others and learn from their expertise. I can imagine. Do you have any tips for working with others on a project? Communication is key. Make sure everyone is on the same page and knows their role. And don't be afraid to ask for help or offer assistance when needed. That's great advice. I'll keep that in mind. Hey, do you have any funny coding stories you can share? Actually, I once accidentally deleted an entire project I had been working on for days. And I had forgotten to back it up. Needless to say, I learned my lesson after that. Oh no. That must have been a nightmare. I've had a few instances of code running in circles or refusing to compile, but nothing that severe. Yeah, it was definitely a learning experience. But I can laugh about it now, at least. That's the spirit. Thanks for chatting about coding with me. It's always fun to swap stories and tips. Absolutely. Maybe we can work on a project together sometime. Hey B, how's it going? Pretty good, just trying to figure out the best data analysis framework for our project. How about you? Same here. Have you considered using Hadoop? Yeah, we've used it before. But I've been exploring some other options like Spark and Flink. Oh, I've heard good things about Spark. What do you think about it? It's pretty impressive. The speed and performance are better than Hadoop, especially for real-time stream processing. That sounds interesting. But Spark needs a lot of memory, right? Yes, it does. But with the right infrastructure and memory management, it can handle massive amounts of data. Have you thought about using machine learning algorithms for our analysis? Definitely. 
I think with Spark's machine learning library, MLib, we could create some pretty advanced models. That's great to hear. By the way, did you hear about the new AI system that's being developed to detect emotions in customer interactions? No, I haven't. Do you think it could be useful for our project? I think so. If we're analyzing customer feedback and sentiment, it might be a useful tool to have. That's a great point. It's amazing how much the field of data analysis has advanced in just a few years. Yeah, and with all these tools and frameworks at our disposal, we can generate insights and make informed decisions faster than ever. Couldn't agree more. All right, let's get back to work and see what we can come up with. Hi there. I'm a network engineer. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm a network security engineer. Nice to meet you too. So, what's our agenda for today's meeting? Well, we're here to discuss how we can protect the network from cyber attacks. Ah, that's a big challenge these days. What do you suggest? We need to have a multi-layered defense system in place, including firewalls, intrusion detection, and prevention systems. That makes sense. But how about training our employees in cybersecurity awareness? Absolutely. Employee education can be a powerful tool in preventing network breaches. Maybe we can also conduct regular vulnerability assessments to identify potential security flaws. Good point. And we can use penetration testing to simulate attacks and test our defenses. Sounds good. But what about human error? Employees can accidentally expose the network to risks. That's true. We can restrict access to sensitive data and limit the use of external devices on the network. Ah, uh, I see. And we can also monitor activity logs to detect any abnormalities or attempts to breach security. Correct. And we must always stay updated with the latest security patches and technologies to stay ahead of cyber threats. Absolutely. Well, I think we have a solid plan in place. Agreed. Thanks for your input. It's been great working with you. Have a nice day. You too. See you around. Hey, B. I was wondering if you have some time to chat about a new app idea I have. Of course, A. Hey. What's the idea? I was thinking of creating a fitness app that tracks progress and gives personalized tips. That sounds awesome. What did you have in mind for the design? I was thinking of something sleek and easy to use. Maybe some bright colors to make it pop. I love the idea of bold colors. What kind of workout progress should we track? I think we should track basic movements like running, walking, and lifting weights. And also give the option to track yoga or Pilates. Great idea. What kind of personalized tips were you thinking of providing? I was thinking of providing workout suggestions based on the user's fitness level and goals. That's a great feature. Have you thought about incorporating wearable devices like smartwatches? Yes. I was thinking of integrating with some popular wearable devices so users can track their workouts even more accurately. That's perfect. Should we make it available for both iOS and Android? Definitely. We want to make sure as many people can use it and with cross-platform accessibility, it's a win-win. I completely agree. What about reminders for workouts? Yes, that is definitely necessary. Users should be able to set workout reminders so they don't forget to be active. What about challenges to keep users motivated? Great point. We should include challenges to keep users motivated and on track. What about sharing their progress on social media? That's definitely necessary. Users should have the option to share their progress with friends and family. What about including some healthy meal suggestions? Love that idea. We can add nutrition tracking and share meal suggestions based on the user's fitness goals. What about a community feature to encourage users to connect with each other? That's a great feature. We should have user profiles and community forums where people can connect about workouts. I love it. Are we thinking of a specific name for our new app? How about Fitmate? It represents a friend who is committed to helping you stay on track to reach your fitness goals. That's a great name, eh? Hey. I really enjoyed chatting about this exciting project with you. Thanks, B. It's always fun to brainstorm new ideas with a talented designer like you. Hey B, have you ever heard of ISO 27001 Physical Access? Uh, nope. What's that? It's a standard that outlines the requirements for secure physical access to information and data centers. Interesting. So, why is it important? Physical security is just as important as digital security when it comes to protecting sensitive information. With ISO 27001 physical access, 
organizations can ensure that only authorized individuals have access to data centers. Got it. So, how can a company become ISO 27001 certified? Well, they need to implement the requirements outlined in the standard and have the certification audited by a third party. That sounds like a lot of work. Are there any benefits to being certified? Absolutely. Many clients and stakeholders require their partners to be ISO 27001 certified to ensure the security of their data. Makes sense. Do you know of any companies that are ISO 27001 certified? Yes, I actually worked with a company that recently got certified. They noticed an increase in client trust and a decrease in security breaches after implementing the standard requirements. That's great to hear. I think I'll recommend this to my company's IT department. It's definitely worth considering. With ISO 27001 Physical Access, you can have peace of mind knowing your data is secure from both digital and physical threats. Thanks for telling me about it. Hi there B, how's it going? Hey, pretty good. Excited for tonight's menu? Absolutely. I've been working on some new dishes. What about you? Same here. I have a couple of special cocktails planned. Nice. What's the secret ingredient in your signature drink? I can't reveal all my secrets, eh? Let's just say it involves a lot of passion fruit. Sounds intriguing. I'm planning on doing a fusion dish tonight. Japanese and French cuisine combined. That sounds amazing. I can't wait to try it. Glad to hear it. What kind of vibe are you going for with your cocktails? I'm aiming for fun and playful. Maybe even a bit whimsical. Perfect. I want to match the dishes with drinks that complement them. I love that idea. It's all about the total experience for our customers. Absolutely. What are your thoughts on using dry ice or smoke with the drinks? I think it can be really cool if done correctly. It all depends on the presentation. Agreed. We want to make sure every element enhances the dining experience. Exactly. It's a team effort, eh? Let's make tonight unforgettable. I couldn't have said it better myself, B. Let's give our guests something to talk about for a long time. Let's do it. Hey B, have you had any experience working with ISO 27001 contingency plan? Yeah, I'm pretty familiar with it. Why do you ask? Well, our company is thinking of implementing it. Can you walk me through what it entails? Of course. Basically, it's a plan that outlines procedures to follow in the event of security breaches. Oh, okay. So what are some key elements of the plan? Well, you need to identify potential risks and vulnerabilities, establish a response team and communication channels, and regularly review and test the plan. Got it. So who is typically involved in the response team? Usually, there's a coordinator, technical staff, legal counsel, and communication personnel. Wow, sounds like a lot of people. How frequent should the plan be reviewed? At least once a year, and any substantial changes to the system or infrastructure should trigger a review too. What would you say is the biggest advantage of having a contingency plan in place? It helps minimize damage and loss in the event of a breach and promotes faster recovery times. That makes sense. Do you have any tips for creating a successful contingency plan? Make sure everyone involved knows their role and the procedures inside out and assign backups in case someone is unavailable. Great advice. Thanks, B. Do you have any horror stories of companies without a contingency plan? Oh, yeah. I once heard of a company that lost all their data due to a hack. They had no plan in place and it took them weeks to recover. Yikes. That sounds like a nightmare. Thanks for sharing and for all your help. No problem. Happy to assist. Hi there. Are you ready for a dive today? Definitely. I can't wait to capture some great shots of the reef. Great. The water conditions are perfect today. Have you dived here before? No, this is my first time in the Great Barrier Reef. I'm hoping to get some unique shots. You'll definitely get some. There are so many species of fish and corals here, your camera will be very busy. That's what I'm hoping for. What kind of marine life can we expect to see today? We may spot some green turtles, sharks, and maybe even a manta ray if we're lucky. Wow, that sounds amazing. Do you have any tips for getting the perfect shot? Yes, make sure you focus on the details and use the natural light to your advantage. Got it. I'll keep that in mind. So, how did you become a diving instructor? I've been diving for over 15 years, and it just felt natural to share my love of the underwater world with others. That's awesome. It's incredible how much you can see and learn while diving. 
Absolutely. It's like exploring an entirely different world down there. Well, I'm excited to explore that world with you today. Let's gear up and dive in. Sounds good to me. Let's go. Hey B, have you ever tried Sate Iam before? No, I haven't. What is it? It's a delicious Indonesian dish made of grilled chicken skewers served with a mouth-watering peanut sauce. That sounds great. Where can we find it? There's a street vendor just around the corner who makes the best Sate Iam in town. Let's go and give it a try. Is it spicy? Well, it can be if you add some chili on top of it, but the peanut sauce balances out the heat perfectly. I love peanut sauce, so I'm definitely trying it. Is it easy to eat? Yes, you just have to grab the skewers and dunk them into the peanut sauce. And the best part is that you can eat them with your hands. Eating with my hands? This is going to be fun. Is Sait Iam a popular dish in Indonesia? Absolutely. It's like a national dish, and you can find it anywhere from street vendors to fancy restaurants. I can't wait to give it a try. Thanks for introducing me to this dish, A. Eh? No problem, B. You won't regret it. Let's go get some Sate I am and have a fun food adventure. Hey B, how's it going? Have you had a chance to look at the user feedback yet? Hey A, I'm doing well. Yeah, I've been analyzing the data and there are some interesting trends. That's great to hear. Any initial thoughts on what we can improve? Well, the users seem to be frustrated with the search function. It's not providing accurate results. Interesting. Do you have any recommendations for improving it? One idea could be to incorporate machine learning algorithms to better understand the user's search intent. That's a good idea. How do you think we can train our algorithms to do that? We can use supervised learning techniques to label search queries and their intent. Then we can use that information to inform our recommendations. Sounds like a solid plan. How long do you think it would take to implement something like this? It would depend on the complexity of the algorithm, but I would estimate a few weeks to a month. Hmm, that's longer than we were hoping for. Is there anything we can do in the meantime to improve the search function? We can try tweaking the current algorithm to see if that helps. It might not be as accurate, but it could still provide some improvement. Okay, let's give that a shot. Have you looked at any other user feedback that stood out to you? Yeah, another area that needs improvement is the user interface. It's not as intuitive as it could be. Yeah, we've received some feedback about that too. Do you have any ideas for how we could make it more user-friendly? One idea would be to conduct user testing to see where exactly users are getting stuck or confused. From there, we can make targeted improvements. That's a great idea. Do you think we should conduct the user testing in-house or outsource it? I think outsourcing would be more efficient. We can work with a user experience research firm to ensure we get unbiased results. Good point. Do you have any suggestions for firms we could work with? Yes, I've worked with a few in the past. I can send over some recommendations for you to take a look at. Awesome, that would be great. Thanks for all your help, B. I feel like we're making some good progress. Of course, A. Always happy to help improve the user experience. Hey B. Have you ever had amazing chicken wings before? Of course. Who doesn't love a good plate of chicken wings? Right? I mean, they are the perfect mix of savory and spicy. And don't forget about the crispy texture. Yes. And the best part is that you can never eat just one. I can easily eat a whole plate by myself. Haha, <laughs> yummy yeah, too. But have you ever tried making your own wings at home? Actually, I have. But they never turn out as good as the ones from a restaurant. Oh really? I think it's all about the seasoning and the sauce. My secret is to mix in some chili powder and paprika for a tasty kick. That's a great idea. And for the sauce, I love a good homemade honey mustard. Yes, honey mustard is a classic. But personally, I prefer a spicy buffalo sauce with some blue cheese dressing on the side. Yum. That sounds so good. Now I'm craving some chicken wings. Me too. Let's go find a restaurant with great wings and have a feast. Deal. I'll bring the napkins and you bring your appetite. Good morning, team. We have a new project to work on. B, I'd like you to lead this one. Thanks for the opportunity, boss. What's the project about? It's about creating a new marketing campaign for our latest product. We need to sell more of them. Sounds exciting. Who will be on my team? You'll have C, D, and E on your team. I'm sure they'll be thrilled to work with you. Awesome. I'll get in touch with them and we can start brainstorming ideas. 
that's great to hear. Any specific approach you'd like to take for the campaign? I was thinking of going for a humorous angle. People always respond well to a good laugh. I like your style, B. That should definitely catch their attention. Thanks, boss. I'll make sure to keep you updated on our progress. Perfect. And don't forget to have some fun while you're at it. Will do, boss. I'll make sure the team enjoys the process. Great attitude, B. Now let's get to work and make this campaign a success. On it, boss. Team, are you ready? That's the spirit. I have faith in you all. Hey B, did you hear about the police officer and the suspect who were being investigated at the station? No, what happened? The police officer asked the suspect, where were you on the night of the crime? And the suspect replied, I was at home, watching TV with my mama. Ha ha, that's a classic answer. Did the police officer believe him? Nope, not at all. So the police officer asked, what were you watching on TV? And the suspect replied, uh, I was watching, uh, the Weather Channel. Laughs, that's a terrible alibi. So, did they catch the suspect? Yeah, eventually they did. The police officer found some evidence, and it led him to the suspect. And, do you know what the suspect said? What? A uh, man, why you gotta be so good at your job? Laughs, I guess he got caught red-handed. But at least it was a funny story. Yeah, it goes to show you that you can't outsmart the law. Definitely, especially if you got a good detective on your case. Well, thanks for sharing that story, eh? It was entertaining. No problem, anytime, B. Hey, B, have you seen the script for the movie scene we are shooting today? Yeah, I saw it. Seems like it's going to be a challenging one. Absolutely. But you're a pro, I'm sure you'll handle it with ease. Well, that's what you're paying me for, right? Laughs. Laughs, you got me there. But seriously, I'm glad you're working with me on this. Of course. I'm always happy to work with talented directors like you. You're too kind. But hey, I have to give credit to my cast and crew as well. Definitely. Speaking of crew, have you seen our amazing set designers work for this scene? Oh yes, it's stunning. I almost forgot we were shooting in a studio. I know, right? It's amazing how they can create such realistic sets. That's why we call them magic makers. Laughs? Laughs, well, we also have to give credit to the costume department. Yes, they definitely captured the style and essence of the time period we're portraying. It's going to be a real treat for the audience. Absolutely. And with the real emotions and chemistry between us, it'll be a masterpiece. Agreed. Let's give it our best shot, shall we? Absolutely. Let's make some movie magic. Laughs, you got it. Hi B, I'm glad we're working together on this project. Do you have any initial ideas on how we can make our online art exhibition stand out? Hey, hey, good to meet you too. I was thinking we could create an interactive experience by allowing visitors to virtually walk through the gallery space. That's a great idea. We could also incorporate videos of the artists explaining their inspiration behind each piece, providing viewers with a more immersive experience. Yes, and maybe we could have a chat feature that allows visitors to ask the artists questions about their work. That sounds like a great way to engage visitors and create a sense of community. Another idea I had was to incorporate augmented reality, AR, so that visitors could see the artwork in their own space. Awesome idea. That'll definitely give visitors a unique and memorable experience. How about we add a feature that allows visitors to favorite certain pieces and create their own virtual collection? Brilliant. That way they can come back and view their collection anytime they want. And speaking of collections, why not let visitors curate their own shows and share them on social media? I love it. That could really create a buzz around our online exhibition. And finally, how about a feature that lets visitors purchase pieces directly from the site? Yes, that would give our website a practical aspect and make it easier for visitors to support the artists. This has been a great brainstorming session, B. Agreed, A. I'm excited to see how our ideas will come to life in the final product. Hello B, nice to see you today. How can I assist you with our manufacturing process optimization? Hi A, yes, I've been reviewing our production data and I think we could improve our efficiency and cost effectiveness. Absolutely, what areas do you think we could focus on? One area we could optimize is our inventory management. We can try to reduce overstocking and stockouts to achieve the perfect balance. That's a good suggestion. We can implement a software solution to track inventory levels and optimize orders based on demand. 
Another area we can focus on is our supply chain management. We can negotiate better supplier agreements to reduce our costs. Yes, we can use data analysis to identify the best suppliers, negotiate better rates, and consolidate shipments. Do you think automation could help with our manufacturing process optimization? Yes, automation can increase efficiency, reduce error rates, and enhance quality control. We can invest in robots and other machinery to handle repetitive tasks. That's a great point. We could also use machine learning algorithms to predict machinery issues and prevent downtime. Finally, we should also consider our energy consumption. We can implement energy-efficient solutions to reduce our costs and carbon footprint. Agreed. We can use smart sensors and AI-based models to optimize energy consumption in our factories. Sounds great. I'll get started on mapping out a plan and implementing these solutions. Thank you for your insight, B. My pleasure, A. Let's reduce our costs and improve our manufacturing process together. Hey B, how's it going today? Not bad, thanks. Just trying to figure out how we can improve our energy efficiency at this energy company. Ah, that's a big task. Have you thought about using data analysis to help? Actually, that's exactly what I've been working on. By analyzing our usage data, we can identify areas where we're using more energy than necessary and make improvements. That's really smart. What kind of data are you looking at specifically? Well, we're looking at everything from energy consumption and production to weather patterns and consumer behavior. Well, that's a lot of data to work with. How do you even begin to make sense of it all? It's definitely a challenge, but we're using machine learning algorithms to identify patterns and make predictions. The insights we get from the data can help inform our decisions about what changes to make. That's really impressive. Do you think these changes will save the company money? Absolutely. By reducing energy consumption in areas where it's not needed, we can lower our costs and improve our bottom line. It sounds like this is a win-win situation for both the company and the environment. Absolutely. By reducing our energy usage, we're also helping to reduce our carbon footprint and be more sustainable in the long run. So what's the next step in this process? Right now, we're still in the data collection and analysis phase, but once we have a better understanding of our usage patterns, we can start making targeted changes to improve our efficiency. Well, keep up the great work. It sounds like you're really onto something here. Thanks, I appreciate it. I'm really excited about the potential of using data analysis to drive positive change in the energy industry. And I'm excited to see the results of your hard work. Keep me updated. Will do. Thanks for your support. Hey B, have you heard about ISO 27001 access control? Yeah, isn't that the super important security standard for information management? Yes, exactly. And do you know what it's all about? I guess it has something to do with controlling access to confidential information. Right. It's all about limiting access to only authorized personnel to keep data safe and secure. Ah, that sounds like a bouncer at the club checking names on a list. Haha, <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. But with less clubbing and more computer screens. So, what are the benefits of being ISO 27001 compliant? Well, it definitely helps with compliance requirements and avoiding costly penalties. Plus, it boosts customer confidence in your company's security measures. Oh, that's good to know. I'll make sure to mention it in our next team meeting. Definitely. And don't forget about the peace of mind knowing that your sensitive data is well protected. Sounds like a win-win situation. Let's get to work on our company's ISO 27001 certification. Agreed. Let's lock down our access controls and rock our compliance audit. Woohoo! Who says information security can't be fun? Exactly. We'll party like it's ISO 27001 compliant 999. Hello everyone, it's great to be here. I hope you're ready for a mouth-watering demonstration. Well, it all starts with the finest quality cacao beans. We carefully roast and grind them to create a smooth consistency. Then we add sugar, milk, and other flavors to create unique blends. Ah, uh, there was one time when a batch of chocolate started to thicken up too fast, so we had to jump in and mix it by hand. By the end of it, we were covered head to toe in chocolate. Absolutely. We've experimented with everything from lavender to bacon. You'd be surprised at how well some of these flavors work together. Take a small piece and let it melt in your mouth slowly, savoring the flavors. Pay attention to the texture and the way it feels on your tongue. And always make sure to pair it with a good cup of coffee or tea. It was my pleasure. And don't forget to stop by our gift shop on your way out to pick up some of our delicious chocolates. Thanks for coming. 
Hi there, B. How's it going? Good, thanks. How about you? I'm doing well. Hey, I wanted to ask for your opinion on something. As a database engineer, what's your approach when it comes to data storage? Well, as a software developer, I try to ensure that my application is storing data in a structured and organized way. But I think it would be great to hear your thoughts on it. Sure, I think it's important to have a robust and reliable mechanism to store data. With the amount of data that's being generated every day, it's essential to have a scalable and flexible database. Yeah, that's true. But you know, sometimes data gets duplicated because of the different applications that use the same data. How do you usually deal with that? Ah, uh, yes, data duplication is a critical issue. One way to prevent it is to establish a single source of truth for any particular data set. It means that any changes to that data set will be reflected across all the applications that use it. That's a great idea. I also think it's important to secure the data not just from external attacks, but also from internal threats. Absolutely. With all the new data privacy laws and regulations like GDPR, data protection has become more critical than ever. We have to ensure that only authorized people can see and interact with the data. That's right. It was great to talk with you about these things. But hey, can we switch to non-work-related topics now? I could use a break from work for a while. Of course. What do you want to talk about? How about something lighthearted like the latest TV shows or movies? That sounds like a great idea. Have you seen that new zombie movie that came out recently? Hey, B. Look at this amazing scene in the park. I bet you could create a wonderful illustration from it. Absolutely. And you could capture it with your camera too. Together, we could make a great team. That's a fantastic idea. I particularly love how the sunlight hits the trees. Yes, those rays are absolutely magical. I could use a watercolor effect to bring them out. And I could enhance the contrast to make them more vibrant with my camera. Nature is truly a wonder. I couldn't agree more. And with our talents, we can bring its beauty to life. But we should be careful not to disrupt the natural setting while capturing its essence. Absolutely. We can be mindful of our surroundings while we work. I think I have an idea of what angle to shoot from. What about you? I'm thinking of incorporating the vibrant flowers in the foreground with the trees in the background. That sounds lovely. I can't wait to see how it turns out. The possibilities are endless when we work with nature. It's such a peaceful and inspiring environment. Speaking of peaceful, do you hear those birds chirping in the background? They really complete the scene. Definitely. They add a sense of serenity and tranquility to the park. Well, let's get to work then. I can't wait to combine our talents to create something truly special. Me too. This is going to be a great collaboration. Hey, have you ever tried vacuum sealing your clothes before packing them for a trip? No, I haven't. Is it really effective? Absolutely. It saves so much space in your luggage and keeps your clothes wrinkle-free. That sounds pretty amazing. What kind of vacuum bags do you use? I usually go for the ones with a one-way valve. They're really easy to use and they're reusable. Reusable? That's a game-changer. And where do you get them? You can find them at any home goods store or online. Just make sure you get ones that are the right size for your items. Got it. Do you have any tips for packing things like jackets or bulky sweaters? Actually, I saw a trick where you can roll them up and use compression packing cubes. It helps save even more space. That's genius. I always struggle with packing those kinds of items. How many outfits can you usually fit in one bag? It really depends on how much you want to bring. But I usually end up fitting around 7 to 8 outfits with room for a few accessories too. Nice. Thanks for all the tips. I'm definitely going to try vacuum sealing for my next trip. No problem at all. Happy packing. And don't forget to leave some room for souvenirs. Hi there. How are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. What brings you to the park? I'm an environmentalist, and I just love taking in some fresh air whenever I can. Speaking of the environment, have you considered the impact that the lack of greenery can have on our city? To be honest, I haven't given it much thought. What do you suggest we do? Planting more trees would be a great start. They help purify the air and reduce noise pollution. Plus, they add natural beauty to the local landscape. That's a good idea. But where would we plant them all? We have a limited amount of green space in the city. We could start with small parks and public spaces like this one. 
And as for larger areas, we could encourage residents to green their own neighborhoods by planting trees in their yards and public spaces. It would be a community effort. I like that approach. It would promote a sense of ownership and pride in the city. And who wouldn't want a little more greenery in their lives? Exactly. Plus, it would improve our urban ecosystem by providing more habitats for wildlife. I can see the potential. Maybe we should look into creating a citywide initiative to encourage residents to plant trees and take care of them. That's a great idea. We could even have some friendly competition between neighborhoods to see who can plant and maintain the most trees. I like the way you think. I think this could really make a difference in our city, and it would be a great opportunity to bring people together and work towards a common goal. Absolutely. Let's start brainstorming some specific steps and reach out to the community to get things started. Hey there. I'm a technology consultant for this law firm. What can I help you with today? Hi, glad to meet you. I'm a software engineer here, and I'm having trouble with automating our contract management process. Any suggestions? Sure. Have you tried using a contract management software? It could save you so much time and effort. Hmm, I didn't think of that. But wouldn't it be expensive? Not necessarily. There are cost-effective options that are still effective enough for small to medium-sized law firms like yours. That sounds promising. But how long does it usually take to set up? It could take a while to get it up and running, but it's worth the investment in the long run. Once the software is set up, it'll streamline your contract management process and free up time for more important things. Good point. Can it handle all contract types? Yes. The software can handle all kinds of contracts, from simple agreements to complex deals with several layers of approval. Wow, that's great. But what about data security? You don't need to worry about data security. Most contract management software providers have strict security measures in place to protect client confidentiality. Oh, that's a relief to hear. But what about maintenance and upgrades? That's the beauty of contract management software. It's all handled by the provider, so you don't have to worry about a thing. I see. That's certainly convenient. But what about customizing the software to fit our needs? Most software providers offer customization options. You can tailor the software to your law firm's specific needs and preferences. That's fantastic. I'll definitely bring this up with our team. Thanks for the suggestion. Not a problem. Let me know if you need any help getting started with the software. Hey B, have you heard about ISO 27001 Risk Management? Yeah, I've heard of it. It's all about managing risks related to information security, right? That's right. It's a systematic approach to identifying, assessing, and managing information-related risks. Sounds like a dry topic. Is there anything interesting about it? Well, you can think of it as a game of chess. You identify potential threats and vulnerabilities, assess their impact, and come up with strategies to minimize the risk. Wow, that's a new way to look at it. Is there a specific tool or software for implementing ISO 27001? Not really. It's more about the process and the culture of risk management within an organization. I see. So, are there any benefits of implementing ISO 27001? Absolutely. It can help organizations protect their valuable assets, enhance customer confidence, and comply with industry regulations. That's impressive. Is it only applicable to big organizations? No, not at all. Any organization, large or small, can benefit from implementing the ISO 27001 Risk Management Framework. That sounds like something worth looking into. Thanks for the information, A. No problem, B. And remember, keep calm and manage risks like a pro. Hi B, good to see you. Have you ever heard of the phrase writer's block? Of course. It's a common problem for writers. But I'm here to discuss your upcoming publishing plans, not writer's block. Right, sorry about that. Okay, so I've come up with a few ideas for my next book. Do you want to hear them? Absolutely, lay them on me. So the first idea is a romantic comedy about a clumsy florist falling in love with a refined librarian. The second idea is a murder mystery set in a small town. And the third idea is a fantasy adventure involving dragons and wizards. Hmm, those are all interesting ideas, but I think we should focus on what's popular right now. How about a dystopian novel set in a post-apocalyptic world? That could work. What about adding an element of romance to it? Perfect. I think that will make it more appealing to a wider audience. Now, let's discuss the marketing strategy. 
I was thinking about doing a book signing tour across the country. That's a great idea. We can also set up social media accounts and advertise online. Sounds good to me. I'm excited about this project. Thanks for your help, B. No problem. Always happy to help a talented author. Good morning. How's business going? It's going pretty well. I can't complain. How about you? Same here. People seem to love our partnership, combining delicious pancakes with tasty fruit plates. Absolutely. Who wouldn't love a crispy and fresh breakfast combo like this? I totally agree, and your fruit cups bring the perfect balance to our sweet and savory offerings. That's the beauty of working together. It's always great to have a variety of choices for our customers. Speaking of variety, have you tried our new pancake flavor, cinnamon and apple? It's a hit. Wow, that sounds amazing. I'll take one for myself during our break. Would you like some of my juicy watermelon as well? Of course, I love watermelon. It's a perfect refreshment in this hot weather. You know what they say, eat breakfast like a king, and I think we're nailing it with our royal options. Haha, <laughs> exactly. Our customers must feel like royalty with such delicious treats. I'm glad we can provide them with a royal experience. It's all about service and quality. Agreed. Plus, we have such a great location in Yawarit. The atmosphere is always lively and exciting. Absolutely, we're lucky to be part of this vibrant neighborhood. It's always buzzing with energy. Well, I don't know about you, but I think it's time for a quick breakfast break. Couldn't agree more. Let's grab our own delicious treats and enjoy the fleeting morning quietness while we can. Sounds like a plan. See you in a bit. See you soon and good luck with the next customers. Hello there. Are you the manager from the travel company? Yes, that's right. I'm the manager from the company. Nice to meet you. My name is A, a fisherman from this village. I'm glad to meet you too. Likewise, A. So, tell me, what brings you to me? Well, I was thinking of promoting our village as a tourist attraction. I was hoping your company could help me with that. That sounds like an interesting idea. I'm all ears. What's your idea? I was thinking of organizing some fishing trips for tourists. They can come and experience the life of a fisherman and catch their own fish. How does that sound? That sounds amazing. Tourists are always looking for unique experiences. It is a great way to showcase the village and generate revenue for the local people. I'm glad you think so. We can also offer boat tours around the ocean and the village itself. We can show them how we fish and how we live. We have a lot to offer. That's perfect. Don't forget, we can advertise the village on social media so that it reaches a wider audience. We can also collaborate with some local restaurants and lodges to offer package deals. That's a great idea. We have some really delicious seafood restaurants in the village and some great places to stay. This will surely attract more tourists. Absolutely. I can see this project working out really well. Let's get started on it as soon as possible. That sounds great. I'm very excited about this venture. Thank you for your time today. No, thank you for coming with such a great proposal. It will benefit the village in so many ways. Hi B. How's your day been? Hey A. It's been good, just checking out some new tech for a project. What about you? Same. Did you hear about the new e-commerce site we're testing? Yeah, I did. I'm excited to dive in, but nervous too. Ha, huh, me too. But that's what makes it fun, right? Definitely. So how do you think we should approach testing this site? Well, as a software testing engineer, I'd recommend we start with functional testing. We need to make sure everything works properly. That's a good point. And as a front-end engineer, I'm going to be doing a lot of visual testing too. Making sure everything looks slick and runs smoothly. Oh, for sure. But we can't forget about performance testing as well. Yeah, we definitely don't want any laggy loading times or broken links. Absolutely. And speaking of links, we need to test the checkout process thoroughly too. Ah, uh, the dreaded checkout process. I've had nightmares about that in the past. Huh, don't worry. We got this. And don't forget about security testing too. Yes, definitely. We need to make sure all the transactions and customer data are secure. Exactly. And I think if we approach this systematically, we'll be able to cover all our bases and have a successful testing process. Totally agree. And hey, when we do finally launch the site, we get to be a part of something awesome. Yes. It feels great to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. Couldn't have said it better myself. 
Now, how about we finish our coffee and get to work? Sounds like a plan. Let's do this. Hey B, have you heard of ISO 27001 compliance? Yeah, I've heard of it. It's all about information security management, right? Yes, that's right. It's all about ensuring the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information. Sounds like a serious and important matter. Definitely, but it doesn't have to be boring. I mean, who doesn't like to keep their information safe, right? Ha uh, true. So, do you know anyone who is ISO 27001 compliant? Well, I know a few companies that have achieved it. They say it gives them a competitive edge. Really? How so? Think about it. Would you rather trust your sensitive information with someone who has implemented security measures or someone who hasn't? Good point. So, what do you think is the most challenging aspect of ISO 27001 compliance? I would say it's the continuous improvement. The standards require regular reviews and updates to ensure the effectiveness of the measures. That makes sense. But hey, at least it keeps us on our toes, right? Absolutely. It's always better to have proactive measures than to wait for something bad to happen. Couldn't agree more. Thanks for the enlightening conversation, A. Anytime, B. Keep your data safe. Good evening. I hope you're enjoying the concert so far. Yes, it's fantastic. You're a wonderful musician. What inspired you to become a musician? Thank you. Well, my parents were both musicians, and they started teaching me when I was very young. Music just became a part of my life. That's amazing. What's your favorite type of music to play? I really enjoy playing classical music, but I also like to play jazz and blues. That's great. Do you have any advice for someone who wants to learn how to play an instrument? Definitely. Firstly, practice regularly and don't give up when it gets tough. Secondly, listen to different types of music to broaden your musical knowledge. Lastly, find a good teacher who can guide you. Thanks for the tips. Do you have any funny stories from your concerts? Oh yes, I remember one time I was playing the guitar and one of the strings broke during the performance. I had to quickly change it without the audience noticing. It was a bit of a challenge. Haha, <laughs> that must have been nerve-wracking. What's your favorite performance venue? The Sydney Opera House, of course. It has a great acoustic and a wonderful atmosphere. Agreed. Do you have any upcoming performances that we should look out for? Yes, I'm performing at the Melbourne Recital Center next month. It's going to be an exciting show. Sounds great. I'll definitely keep an eye out for it. Thanks for chatting with me. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Enjoy the rest of the concert. Hi B, how's the experiment going? Hi A, it's going well. The samples are reacting as we expected. That's great news. Did you get a chance to test the new equipment? Yes, I did. I was a bit overwhelmed at first, but it's much easier to use than I thought. Excellent. You know, when I was a graduate student, we had to use equipment that was much more complicated. Really? I can't even imagine how difficult it must have been. It was a challenge, but it definitely made me appreciate modern technology all the more. I'm just glad we have all these tools to use. It's amazing how much progress science has made over the years. Absolutely. But don't forget, science still has a long way to go. There's always more to discover and explore. That's true. But for now, let's focus on figuring out the best way to interpret our data. Good idea. Maybe we can order some pizza and brainstorm some new ideas while we take a break? Sounds like a plan to me. Have you heard about how artificial intelligence is transforming digital transformation? Yes, definitely. AI has become such an important tool for improving business operations. Exactly. By using AI to analyze customer data and predict trends, companies can make better strategic decisions. And not only that, but AI can also help automate repetitive tasks, freeing up time for employees to focus on more complex tasks. I've also heard that chatbots powered by AI can provide better customer service and engagement. Yes, and some companies are even using AI to detect and prevent cyber attacks. Wow, that's impressive. Do you think AI is the future of business? I definitely think so. As technology advances, the opportunities for using AI will only increase. Agreed. But do you think there are any potential downsides to relying too heavily on AI? It's possible. For example, AI could replace certain jobs and leave some workers unemployed. That's a good point. It will be important for companies to find a balance between using AI to improve efficiency and maintaining a human workforce. 
Definitely. And I think it's also important for businesses to invest in AI and cybersecurity training for their employees. Yes, that's a great point. By providing training and education, companies can ensure their employees are equipped to handle the latest advancements in technology. Absolutely. Overall, I think AI has the potential to revolutionize the way we do business, but it's important to approach it with caution and consideration. Good morning, this is Tower Control. How can I assist you? Hi there, this is Control Center. We have a flight coming in at 9 a.m., but the runway is currently occupied. Can you give us an estimated time when we can clear it? Sure, let me check. It looks like the plane currently on the runway is scheduled to depart in about 10 minutes, so we should be able to clear it in about 15 minutes. That sounds good. We also have a flight departing at 9.30 a.m., so we'll need the runway cleared by then. Noted. We'll prioritize getting the runway cleared in time for your departure. Anything else you need help with? Actually, we've been experiencing some wind gusts on the tarmac. Can you give us a weather report and advise us on whether it's safe for planes to take off and land? Absolutely. Our meteorologist just reported mild to moderate gusts coming from the southwest. We suggest pilots take caution when landing and taking off, but it should be safe for flights to proceed as scheduled. Thank you, that's very helpful. I appreciate your assistance. No problem at all. That's what we're here for. Anything else I can help you with? That's all for now. Thank you again, and have a great day. You too. Good luck with your flights today. Hey B, have you ever tried tiramisu before? Yes, I have. It's one of my favorite desserts. Why do you ask? I just tried it for the first time at a fancy Italian restaurant last night, and it was amazing. I never knew coffee and ladyfingers could taste so good together. Oh yeah, tiramisu is made with ladyfingers and mascarpone cheese, which gives it that creamy texture. Did you have any cocoa powder or chocolate shavings on top? Yes, it was dusted with cocoa powder. It looked too good to eat, but I couldn't resist. Haha, uh, I know that feeling. Tiramisu can be really indulgent. But did you know that it originated in Italy and means pick me up in Italian? Really? That's interesting. It certainly lifted my mood when I had it. Yeah, it's said to have been invented in the 1960s in a restaurant in Treviso, near Venice. Apparently, it was created to give diners energy for the rest of their meals. Well, it certainly gave me a sugar rush. I almost felt like I could run a marathon after eating it. Haha, uh -huh. it's not exactly a health food, but it's a great treat once in a while. Next time you have it, try it with a shot of espresso on the side. That's how they traditionally serve it in Italy. Ooh, that sounds like a perfect pairing. Thanks for the suggestion, B. You're always full of fun food facts. No problem, A. Tiramisu is one of those desserts that everyone should try at least once. It's a slice of sweet heaven that's hard to resist. Hey there, B. How's it going? Doing great. What's up? So, I was thinking about how we can improve our self-driving cars. Any ideas? Oh yeah, definitely. Have you heard of machine learning? Yes, I have. But how can we implement it into our system? Well, we could use it to improve image recognition in our cameras. That way, the car can quickly identify road signs, pedestrians, and obstacles. That sounds like a great idea. How accurate would it be, though? With machine learning, the accuracy could improve drastically over time. The more data we feed it, the more accurate it becomes. Wow, that's impressive. What kind of data do we need? We would need lots of images of various road conditions and scenarios. We could label them to help the system identify and learn, and we could also use simulations. That makes sense. Speaking of simulations, have you thought about using reinforcement learning? Absolutely. We could train our system by rewarding it based on its actions. For example, if it correctly identifies a stop sign, it would get a positive reward. Interesting. Do you think we should also focus on improving the reaction time of the car? Definitely. We could use machine learning to analyze past data and make accurate predictions about upcoming situations, giving the car more time to react. Great point. Do you see any potential challenges for implementation? Well, it will be important to continuously monitor and update the system's algorithms to prevent any bias or errors. That's a good point. We'll need to ensure that our data is diverse and unbiased. Exactly. Are you excited about the potential of machine learning in our self-driving cars? I'm definitely on board. It's exciting to think about the possibilities and how it can make our cars safer and more efficient. Me too. The future of self-driving cars is looking bright with this technology. 
Hey B, good to see you. So we are here to talk about designing an immersive user interface for our new game, right? Yes, that's correct. I'm really excited about this project. Do you have any ideas on how we can make the interface more immersive? Well, we can start by using visually stimulating graphics and animations that draw players in. Great idea. And we can also incorporate sound effects and background music to create an engaging atmosphere. Speaking of sound effects, should we add voiceover actors? That's a great idea. It would really add to the overall experience. But it might be costly, what do you think? Hmm. Well, we could always look into hiring freelancers or offering incentives to our team members who can voice act. True. We could also use text-to-speech technology if necessary. Yes, that could work. How about the navigation? We want players to easily access all the features. We could try using a minimalist layout with intuitive icons and gestures. That's a good suggestion. We should also consider having customizable settings to tailor the interface to each player's preference. Definitely. And what about the background story and lore? We want the interface to reflect the game's narrative. Right. We could incorporate subtle hints and Easter eggs that relate to the game's storyline. It would make the game more entertaining and rewarding for players. I totally agree. The user interface should not only be functional, but also engaging and entertaining. Yes, and one last thing. We should keep the interface simple and easy to navigate, but also add depth to it like a well-designed game level. Sounds like a challenge, but I'm up for it. Let's get started on bringing this immersive interface to life. Hello there. Can you recommend a good main dish and red wine pairing? Of course. Would you like something meaty or something on the lighter side? Hmm. How about something meaty? Our steak and mashed potatoes are a popular choice, and it pairs well with a bold red wine like a Cabernet Sauvignon. Sounds perfect. What about something for my friend who's a vegetarian? We have a delicious eggplant parmesan dish that's quite flavorful. It pairs well with a fruitier red wine like a Pinot Noir. That's great. And what about dessert? Any recommendations? Our chocolate lava cake with a scoop of vanilla ice cream is quite popular. You might want to try it with a dessert wine like a late harvest Riesling. Yum, that sounds amazing. You seem to really know your wines. Thank you, I'm glad to hear that. We have a great wine selection here and I'm always happy to make suggestions. That's really helpful. Thanks so much for your recommendations. It's my pleasure. I hope you and your friend enjoy your meal and wine pairing tonight. I'm sure we will. Thanks again for your help. You're welcome. Enjoy your meal. Hi there. I wanted to confirm if the room comes with a bathtub. Yes, it does. Are you planning to soak in it for a while? Absolutely. I love taking relaxing baths, especially after a long day of sightseeing. Good to know. Do you prefer bubble baths or aromatherapy oils? Hmm, tough choice. I think I'll go for bubble baths this time. What about you? I'm more of a shower person myself, but I might try the bathtub since you made it sound so relaxing. Great, we should make it a group activity. Just kidding, unless you want to join me. Thanks for the invitation, but I'll pass this time. I need to catch up on some work. No problem, I understand. Maybe another time. By the way, have you checked out the hotel's pool? Not yet. Is it worth seeing? Definitely. It's located on the rooftop with a stunning view of the city. It's a great spot for some sunbathing too. Sounds tempting. I'll have to check it out before I leave. Thanks for the tip. Anytime. Speaking of leaving, have you planned out your itinerary for tomorrow? Not yet. I was hoping to get some inspiration from you. Do you have any recommendations? Well, I heard the local market is a must-visit, and there's a famous temple nearby. We could grab some street food along the way as well. That sounds like a great plan. Let's meet up in the lobby tomorrow morning and go together. Perfect. I'm looking forward to it. See you then. Safe travels back home. Good morning, B. How are you today? Hello, A. I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. How about you? I'm doing great. I'm excited to discuss the design plans we've been working on. Yes, me too. I'm really looking forward to seeing the new ideas you have for our website. Absolutely. I've been thinking about incorporating some fun animations and interactive features to make the site more engaging. That sounds fantastic. Our goal is to make our website more user-friendly and visually appealing. Yes, and I've also been considering using bold colors and playful typography to give the site a more modern and fresh look. 
I love that idea. It's important for us to stand out from our competitors and have a unique brand identity. Definitely. And speaking of standing out, I've also been brainstorming ways to incorporate some humor into the design, maybe through some witty copy or quirky illustrations. Oh, I love that. Our brand is all about being approachable and friendly, so adding some humor would be perfect. That's what I love about working with you, B. Your creativity and vision always inspire me to come up with unique and innovative designs. Oh, thank you. And the feeling is mutual. Your design skills and attention to detail never cease to amaze me. Thanks for the kind words, B. I can't wait to continue working together on this project and see where our creative ideas take us. Me too, A. Let's make this website the best it can be. Hi there. I'm a flight attendant for this airline, and I'm curious about the luggage process here at the airport. Can you tell me a bit more about it? Hi, nice to meet you. Sure, I'd be happy to explain. Our team takes the luggage off of incoming flights and loads it onto the conveyor belt to be sent to the baggage claim area. That sounds pretty straightforward. Do you ever have any trouble with lost luggage or delays in getting it to the right place? Of course, there are always occasional issues. But we have a pretty thorough system in place to track and locate misplaced bags as quickly as possible. That's good to hear. I know our passengers really rely on getting their bags back quickly and safely. Definitely, it's one of the biggest concerns for travelers. Is there anything specific you'd like to know about the process? Actually, yes. Can you explain how the luggage is sorted onto the right connecting flights once it reaches the airport? Sure thing. We use a combination of barcodes and physical sorting to get each bag to the right aircraft. It can be a bit of a puzzle sometimes, but we take pride in getting it done efficiently. Impressive. It must be a pretty high-pressure job at times. It definitely keeps us on our toes. But we work together as a team to make everything run smoothly. Speaking of teamwork, do you ever get any help from passengers in the luggage process? Sometimes we get volunteers to help load or unload packages if they have extra time before their flight. But we have strict safety protocols in place, so we don't usually allow non-staff members to work with the bags. Understandable. Well, thank you so much for sharing all this information with me. I have a newfound appreciation for all the work that goes into getting luggage where it needs to go. No problem at all. We're all working together to make air travel as smooth and stress-free as possible. Welcome to our beauty salon. How may I assist you today? Hi, I would like to try a facial treatment. Sure, we have different types of facial treatments. Have you tried any before? No, this is my first time. What do you recommend? Well, our hydrating facial is quite popular. It's perfect for dry skin types. That sounds good. What does the treatment include? It includes cleansing, exfoliation, and a hydrating mask. It also includes a neck and shoulder massage. I'll go for that then. Great. Let's get started. First, we need to cleanse your skin. Okay, sounds good. Your skin looks great. Now, let's do the mask. This feels so relaxing. I'm glad you're enjoying it. You have such beautiful skin. Thank you, that's so nice of you to say. Of course. We're almost done. Just one more step. Wow, this is such a great experience. I'm so happy to hear that. We hope to see you back at our salon soon. Hey there, B. Are we ready to grill up a storm tonight? Absolutely, A. We've got some top-quality meat and skewers for our customers. I can smell the delicious aroma already. The night market in Osaka is always buzzing with hungry people. They know where to come for authentic Japanese barbecue. We have a reputation to maintain, B. Let's make sure we put on a great show tonight. Don't worry, A. I've brushed up on my grilling skills. That's what I like to hear. And with your secret sauce, we're sure to keep our customers coming back for more. You know it, A. Eh? It's all about the sauce. Speaking of customers, look at that group over there eyeing up the menu. They'll be in for a treat. I recommend the chicken skewers or the wagyu beef. And for those who are feeling adventurous, we have some interesting options like chicken gizzards or beef tongue. It's all about exploring new tastes and flavors. That's the spirit. And when they pair it with some ice-cold beer or sake, it's a match made in heaven. I couldn't agree more. Cheers to another successful night, A. Eh? Cheers, B. Let's get grilling. Hey B, have you seen the latest report on global warming? It's quite alarming. Yes, A. Eh? 
The rise in temperature and sea level is a major concern for us as engineers working in the oil industry. Absolutely. It's our responsibility to balance the need for energy development and protecting the environment. I agree. That's why we have to ensure safety and environmental regulations are strictly followed in our operations. Plus, we should also explore and invest in renewable energy sources as an alternative to fossil fuels. Speaking of renewable energy, have you heard of the wind turbines being installed in some oil platforms? It's pretty cool. Yes, it is. It's a positive step towards a greener future. How about using solar energy in our operations? It's definitely worth considering. We can reduce our carbon footprint and save costs in the long run. And let's not forget about waste management. We should minimize our waste and find ways to recycle. Yes, we do produce a lot of waste in our operations. Proper disposal and recycling can make a huge difference. In the end, it all boils down to being responsible stewards of the environment while still meeting the energy demands of the world. Well said, A. Finding the right balance between energy development and environmental protection is essential for a sustainable future. Hey B, have you ever tried Bobby Gooling before? Bobby what? Bobby Gooling, it's a traditional Balinese dish with roasted suckling pig. Oh, never heard of it. Tell me more. It's usually served with rice, vegetables, and spices. The skin is crispy, while the meat is really tender and juicy. Sounds delicious. Where can I find it? In Bali, of course. There are lots of warungs and restaurants that serve Bobby Gooling. Can't wait to try it. Do you know any good places to recommend? I personally love Warung Bobby Gooling Pak Malin in Seminyak. The meat is really flavorful and they give you generous portions. Wow, you sure know your Bobby Gooling. I'll have to trust your recommendation on this one. You won't regret it. But be warned, it can be quite spicy. Spicy food is my thing. Bring it on. Haha, <laughs> I like your spirit. Let's plan a trip to Bali together and hunt down the best Bobby Gooling spots. Heck yeah, let's go. With all these Bobby Gooling talk, I'm getting hungry already. Me too. Let's grab lunch and maybe we can find a place that serves Bobby Gooling here in the city. Sounds great. I'll leave it to you to find us the perfect spot. No problem, consider it done. Hi there, how may I assist you today? Hi, I'm looking for a meeting room to rent. Can you help me with that? Sure, we have several meeting rooms available in different sizes. What are your requirements? I need a room that can fit around 20 people with audio and visual equipment. Not a problem. We have a few options that meet your needs. How long do you need the room for? Just for a day, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay, perfect. May I know what kind of presentation you'll be doing? Maybe I can suggest some additional equipment to enhance your meeting. It's just a standard PowerPoint presentation. But if you have any suggestions, I'm all ears. How about a projector and a screen, and maybe some extra flip charts and markers? It's always good to have some backups. Great idea, let's go with that. All right, let me check the availability for you. Pause, we have the Sunrise Meeting Room available on that day, would you like to book it? Yeah, that sounds good. How much does it cost? It's $500 for the whole day, with the equipment included. Is that within your budget? Yes, it is. Let's book it. Perfect. Can I get your name and contact information? Sure. My name is John Smith and my phone number is 123-456-7890. Thank you, John. We'll send you a confirmation email shortly. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, that's all. Thank you so much for your help. You're welcome, John. Have a great day and good luck with your presentation. Hi, welcome aboard. Where can I take you today? Hi, thanks for picking me up. Can you take me to Flinders Street Station, please? Sure thing. Do you have any plans for the day? Just going to meet my friend for brunch. How about you? Are you working today? No, just driving around the city. I love exploring Melbourne. It's a great city. Have you been to any good restaurants lately? Yes, I went to this amazing Italian place last week. The pizza was out of this world. Oh, that sounds delicious. I love Italian food. Me too. What's your favorite food? I love sushi. Do you like sushi? Yes, I do. Have you been to any good sushi places around here? Yeah, there's a great sushi place just down the road from Flinders Street Station. Awesome, I'll have to check it out. 
Are you a local or are you visiting? I'm visiting from Sydney. Have you ever been to Sydney? Yes, I have. I love the beaches over there. Which is your favorite beach in Sydney? Definitely Bondi Beach. Have you been there? Yes, I have. It's beautiful. How do you like Melbourne so far? I'm loving it. The architecture is amazing and there are so many good cafes and restaurants. I completely agree. Here we are at Flinders Street Station. That will be $15, please. Thanks for the ride. Here's your payment. Have a great day. You too. Take care. Hi there. Have you had a chance to look at the ISO 27001 audit plan that we need to write? Hey, I have briefly reviewed it. Do you have any specific ideas on how to go about it? Well, to start off, we need to ensure that we cover all the necessary areas while keeping it lighthearted. Let's make sure that our Audi T's don't feel intimidated. I agree. I think we should add some quirky statements here and there to lighten the mood. Maybe some funny memes on information security? Haha, <laughs> that sounds like a great idea. Also, we should remind the Audi T's that we are there to help, not judge. Definitely. How about using some illustrations to make the plan visually appealing and easy to read? Maybe a cartoon character depicting different stages of the audit? Yes. That would definitely add an element of fun to the otherwise mundane ISO document. Speaking of fun, how about adding a section titled ISO Trivia with some interesting facts and figures? Brilliant. That will keep the Audi T's engaged and also educate them. I also think we need to keep the language simple and avoid technical jargon as much as possible. We don't want to confuse the Audi T's. Agreed. We should ensure that the plan is user-friendly and easy to comprehend. And finally, we need to make sure that it aligns with the company's culture. We don't want the Audi T's to feel like it's a generic document. Spot on. Let's sprinkle some company-specific information, like their mission statement or values, to personalize it. Sounds like a plan. With all these elements, I think we can make the ISO 27001 audit plan not just informative, but also entertaining. Absolutely, let's get started on it and make it a masterpiece. Good morning. Are you the chef that the fruit farm hired to help us cook with the fruits we harvested? Yes, that's me. Nice to meet you. I'm excited to work with these fresh fruits. Great. Let's start with the peaches. I hear they're great for pies. Absolutely. Do you have a recipe in mind? My grandmother's recipe is a personal favorite. Do you have any ideas on how to give it a twist? How about adding some cinnamon or vanilla extract to the filling? Or we could make a crumble topping. Sounds delicious. Let's get started. Sure thing. Do you have any aprons? We don't want to get our clothes dirty while we cook. Of course, follow me to the kitchen. Wow, your kitchen is so spacious and well-equipped. Yeah, we take our cooking seriously here. Let's get these peaches peeled and sliced. Sure thing. While I'm working on the filling, can you make the crust? You got it. And don't forget the cinnamon. Don't worry, our pie is going to be amazing. Do you have any other fruits we can work with? Definitely, let's try making a blueberry crisp with the remaining blueberries. I love blueberries. This sounds like another winner. This is going to be a great meal. Who knew farming and cooking could be so much fun? It's always great to learn new skills and have fun doing it. And this is definitely a memorable experience. Hi, I'm a front-end developer. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm a mobile app developer. Also nice to meet you. So, we were tasked with designing a user-friendly music player. Do you have any ideas? Well, we could start with a simple, clean design. Maybe use big buttons and sliders? That sounds great. How about integrating some sort of personalized playlist feature? Absolutely, we could add a recommendation algorithm that suggests songs based on user listening habits. Good thinking. And, to make it even more interesting, we could add a feature that connects users to concert tickets, artist interviews, and upcoming performances. Awesome. We could also consider incorporating voice commands so users can control the app without having to touch their phone. That's an excellent idea. We should also make sure the app is compatible on multiple devices and operating systems. Of course. And, let's not forget the all-important equalizer feature to fine-tune audio quality. Definitely. Looks like we have a solid plan. Let's work on the wireframes and prototypes and iterate from there. Sounds like a plan. This should be a fun and exciting project. Absolutely. 
And, who knows, maybe we'll get to test it out at a live concert soon. Ah, that would be amazing. Okay, let's get started on this app. Hey B, have you heard about the new internal website system that's being developed using ASP.NET Razor Pages? Yeah, I have. I'm actually really excited about it because it's a great framework for web development. Definitely. And I think it'll make our jobs as developers a lot easier with its clean syntax and easy-to-use features. Agreed. Plus, the fact that it's built on top of .NET Core means we can take advantage of all the benefits of that platform as well. That's a good point. I've been enjoying working with .NET Core so far. It definitely speeds up the development process. Absolutely. And with Razor Pages, we can create dynamic web pages with minimal coding. It's really cool. I hear you can even use Razor Pages with Blazor to build fully featured web applications. Yes, that's true. It's amazing how much these frameworks can do. I can't wait to see how our new website turns out. Me too. Do you think we should incorporate any other technologies into the stack? Well, we could always consider using a front-end framework like React or Angular to make the user experience even better. That's a good point. I know React is really popular right now. But let's focus on one thing at a time. We still have a lot of work to do with Razor Pages. Fair enough. We definitely have our hands full with this project. But I'm looking forward to putting all our skills to use. Same here. And who knows, maybe we'll even learn some new ones along the way. That's the spirit. Let's get started then. Good morning, B. Welcome to your music class today. What would you like to start with? Hi, A. I'm excited for today's class. Can we begin with learning some chords on the guitar? Absolutely. We'll start with the basic chords and then move on to some more complex ones. Do you have a guitar with you? Yes, I brought my own guitar. I've been practicing on my own a bit, but I still need some guidance. That's great to hear. Let's start with the G chord, which is a common chord used in many songs. Okay, G chord. Got it. Great job. See, that wasn't so hard. Now let's move on to the next one. This is fun. I had no idea playing the guitar could be so easy. That's the spirit. Learning music should be enjoyable. Now, let's try a song that uses the chords we just learned. Sure thing. Which one do you have in mind? Let's try Sweet Home Alabama by Leonard Skinner. It's a classic and uses the chords we just learned. Oh, I love that song. It's perfect for practicing our chords. Right on. Let's get strumming. I'm having such a good time. Thank you, A, for teaching me how to play guitar. You're welcome, B. Remember, practice makes perfect, so keep on strumming, and you'll get even better. I will definitely keep practicing. Playing guitar is a lot of fun. Thank you for showing me how to do it. That's what I'm here for. I'm glad I could be of service. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, thanks for asking. How about you? I'm doing pretty well, thanks. Hey, I wanted to share something pretty exciting with you. Sure, what is it? I recently passed the TOEIC Gold Level exam. That's amazing, congratulations. I'm still working on passing the Silver Level myself. You'll get there soon enough. It's not easy, but it's definitely doable with some practice. Yeah, I know. But hearing your success definitely gives me some much-needed encouragement. I'm glad I can help. What about you? Have you accomplished anything lately that you're proud of? Actually, I've been putting a lot of effort into my pronunciation and I've been receiving some positive feedback lately. That's fantastic. Pronunciation can be tricky, but it's also essential for clear communication. Absolutely. I'm relieved to see that my hard work is paying off. You should be proud of yourself. It takes a lot of time and effort to make progress in a language. Thanks for saying that. It means a lot coming from someone who's already passed the gold level. No problem. Glad to help. And if you ever want to practice or go over any material together, just let me know. I appreciate that a lot. Maybe we can study some vocabulary together sometime. That sounds like a great idea. We can challenge each other to see who can remember the most words. You're on. And maybe someday, we can both reach the platinum level. Hey, only time will tell. But with dedication and support from each other, I don't doubt that we can get there someday. Hey there, B. How's it going? Doing well, thanks. How about yourself? Can't complain. 
You know, I've been thinking about our e-commerce website and I feel like there's room for improvement. What do you think? I completely agree. What specific areas do you think we could improve on? Well, for one, I think our checkout process could be more user-friendly. It seems like there are too many steps involved. Yeah, that's definitely a pain point for our customers. What do you suggest we do? Maybe we could combine some of the steps or make them more intuitive. Also, I think we should have a progress bar to show customers how far along they are in the checkout process. I like those ideas. How about our search function? Do you think that needs improvement? Absolutely. I think we should make it more intelligent so that it shows more accurate results. And also, we could have filters that allow customers to refine their search criteria. That's a great idea. What about the homepage? Do you think we should change anything there? Yeah, I think we could make it more visually appealing and make it easier for customers to find our featured products. Agreed. And also, we could have a section that shows recently viewed products so customers can easily go back to items they were interested in. Ooh, I like that idea. Another thing we could do is have a chatbot that customers can use for instant help. That's a great idea. And we could also have a FAQ section that answers common questions. That's perfect. And for returns and exchanges, we should have a more user-friendly process in place so that customers feel more confident in their purchases. Absolutely. We could also have a system in place that allows customers to track their returns and exchanges. Yes, exactly. And we could also have a rewards program that incentivizes customers to keep coming back. I like that idea. Maybe we could also have a referral program that rewards customers for referring new customers. Yes, that's a great idea. I think with all these improvements, our customers will have a better overall shopping experience. I completely agree. Let's get started on implementing these changes. Hi, I'm a tourist from America. Nice to meet you. Hi there. Welcome to our beautiful beach. What brings you here? I heard about the amazing local culture and scenic spots here and decided to explore. Great decision. Our beach is known for its clear waters and stunning views. Have you tried any local food yet? Yes, I had some amazing seafood last night. I heard that the local market is a must-visit. Do you recommend it? Absolutely. The market is full of fresh seafood, tropical fruits, and handmade crafts. It's a great place to experience the local lifestyle. That sounds amazing. What else do you recommend I see while I'm here? You should definitely visit the local temple nearby. It's been here for centuries and is a perfect representation of our historic culture. Wow, I'd love to see that. And what about activities on the beach? We have plenty of water sports, like banana boats and jet skis. And if you're feeling adventurous, you can even try parasailing or diving. I'm not sure about diving, but parasailing sounds exciting. Do you have any tips for doing it here? Just make sure to wear comfortable clothes and sun protection. And relax, it's a very safe and memorable experience. Thanks for the advice. I can't wait to try it out. You know, I feel like I'm getting to know the local culture better already. That's great to hear. We're always happy to share our beautiful hometown with visitors from all over the world. Hi there. I'm a computer vision engineer. Nice to meet you. Hi. I'm an automation engineer. Nice to meet you too. So, let's talk about how we can use computer vision technology to implement automated production lines. Sure, that sounds interesting. What kind of products do you think we can make? Well, we can start with something simple like packaging or sorting tasks. We can use cameras to detect and classify objects, and then use robotic arms to move them around. That's a good idea. We could also use computer vision to inspect the products for defects or quality issues. Absolutely. With machine learning algorithms, we can train the system to recognize visual patterns and identify defects with high accuracy. I think this will improve the quality of the products and reduce the workload for human operators. Yes, and it will also decrease the risk of errors caused by human fatigue or distraction. That's a great point. Speaking of which, have you ever seen the movie WALL-E? It's a futuristic movie where robots do all the work. Yes, I have. It's a funny and entertaining movie. But I don't think we're quite at that level yet. Laughs, no, not yet. But who knows, maybe someday our machines will be as advanced as WALL-E. Laughs, let's keep dreaming. But for now, we can focus on using computer vision technology to improve our production lines. Yes, let's make our factory more efficient and reliable. Good morning, how are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. How about you? 
I'm doing well, thank you. I wanted to talk with you about our security measures. Sure, what's on your mind? I noticed that we have a lot of people coming in and out of the store without checking their bags. Yes, we do have a policy in place for checking bags, but it's not always followed. Well, we should definitely make sure everyone entering the store is checked. It's for everyone's safety. I completely agree. We also need to make sure the entrance and exit doors are closed properly to prevent unauthorized access. Yes, that's important too. We should also have cameras installed at key locations. We actually do have cameras installed, but we can always reposition them based on customer flow. That's good to know. We also need to make sure that the emergency exits are not blocked and can be easily accessed in case of an emergency. Absolutely. We have monthly safety drills to ensure our employees are familiar with the safety protocols. That's great. It's important to have a plan and be prepared. Thank you for discussing this with me. Anytime. Thank you for bringing it up. We want our customers and employees to feel safe and secure while shopping and working here. Hi B, how are you doing today? Hey A, I'm doing great, thanks for asking. What are we cooking today? We're making a seafood paella. It's one of our signature dishes. That sounds amazing. What do you need me to do? Can you help me chop up the vegetables while I prep the seafood? Sure thing. How do you want the vegetables chopped? Just dice them up into small cubes. Got it. This reminds me of the cooking show I watched last night. Which one was it? It was a show about making sushi. I was blown away by how precise everything has to be. Cooking can definitely be an art form. Speaking of which, have you seen the new art exhibit at the museum? No, I haven't. What's it about? It's a contemporary art exhibit with some pretty unique pieces. Maybe we can check it out after work. That sounds like a great idea. I've been looking for something new to do. Awesome. Back to the paella, could you help me with the rice, please? Of course. How much rice do you need? We'll need three cups in total. Make sure it's rinsed and drained properly, and then add it to the pot with the onions and peppers. Will do. By the way, have you tried that new restaurant that just opened up down the street? Not yet, but I heard the burgers are really good. We should check it out one day. I'm down. I'm always up for trying new food. Me too. That's why I love working in a kitchen. Same here. It's always exciting to try out new recipes and experiment with different flavors. That's what makes cooking so much fun. Okay, now let's add the seafood to the paella and let it cook for a bit. Can't wait to taste it. It smells amazing. Good morning, be nice to meet you. As a software tester, I'm curious how we can make sure our insurance application is secure. Of course, eh. Hey. As a cybersecurity specialist, I can suggest we start by examining the code for vulnerabilities. That's a good idea. We can also perform penetration testing to see if hackers can infiltrate the system. We can also use automated tools to identify potential security weaknesses. Sounds great, but I'm worried about how long it will take to test everything thoroughly. It's crucial to dedicate ample time for testing to ensure that everything is secure. Time spent now can save potentially high costs in the future. That's a good point. Do you have any suggestions on how we can optimize our testing process? We should prioritize high-risk areas and use a risk-based testing approach. That makes sense. I'll make sure to document our testing strategy. Documenting everything is vital, so we can easily identify areas that may require additional testing. I'm getting excited thinking about testing the application from a security perspective. That's the spirit, eh? Testing security can be a fun challenge, and it feels great when we know we've created a secure product for our users. Definitely. Thank you for your help, B. Let's make sure our testing is both rigorous and enjoyable. That sounds like a plan, eh? I'm looking forward to working with you on this. Hey there. This market is bustling with activity, huh? Yes, there's always so much going on here. I'm glad we were able to come here to capture the local food culture. Absolutely, the colors and variety of food here is amazing. What's your favorite dish here? That's a tough question. But I do love the fresh sushi and sashimi. Me too. The quality of the seafood here is top-notch. And the presentation is always so beautiful. Definitely. Have you tried the tamagoyki? It's a type of sweet omelette that's popular here. No, I haven't had a chance to try it yet. But it sounds interesting. How do they make it? They mix eggs with sugar, mirin, and soy sauce, and then roll it into layers. It's really unique and delicious. 
Wow, that sounds amazing. Let's definitely get some to photograph. Sure, let's find a good spot to set up. I think we'll get some great shots here. Absolutely. The energy and excitement of the market is really coming through in the photos. That's what we're here for, to capture the essence of the local food culture. I'm glad we're able to do that. Me too, and I'm thankful to have you as my translator. Your knowledge of the local cuisine has been a huge help. No problem at all, it's been a pleasure working with you. Let's make sure to try everything we can while we're here. Agreed. I think this will be one of the most delicious shoots we've ever done. Hey B, have you heard about ISO 27001 security monitoring? Yeah, I have. It's a pretty big deal these days, isn't it? Definitely. It's all about making sure that companies are keeping their systems secure and minimizing risks. Yeah, I've been reading about it. It seems like more companies are becoming ISO 27001 certified to ensure their security protocols are up to standard. That's right. It's becoming more and more essential to have proper security measures in place. Agreed. With all of the hacks and data breaches that have happened over the years, it's important to stay vigilant. Exactly. So, have you ever been involved in setting up an ISO 27001 compliant security monitoring system? Yeah, I actually have some experience with that. It can be pretty complex, but it's definitely worth it. Nice. Any tips for those of us just starting out? Well, the key is to identify all of the potential risks and vulnerabilities first. And then, implement proper controls and monitoring measures to mitigate those risks. I see. So, what kind of controls and monitoring measures are typically used? It depends on the company and its specific needs, but things like firewalls, intrusion detection systems, and security information and event management tools are commonly used. Makes sense. So, what kind of challenges have you faced when setting up a security monitoring system? One challenge is getting everyone in the organization on board with the process. It can require a lot of buy-in from various departments and stakeholders. Yeah, I can imagine. It's important that everyone understands the importance of security. Definitely. And another challenge is keeping up with the evolving threats and technologies. You need to stay up to date to ensure your security measures remain effective. Great advice, B. Thanks for sharing your expertise. No problem, A. It's important that we all work together to keep our systems and data safe. Have you ever tried non before? No, I haven't. What is it? It's a type of bread that's commonly eaten in South and Central Asia. Oh, that sounds interesting. What does it taste like? Well, it's a bit like a soft and fluffy flatbread. It has a unique texture and taste due to the yeast and ghee that are used in the dough. Hmm, I can almost smell it already. Can you recommend any good places to try naan? Sure. If you're ever in the city, there's this amazing Indian restaurant that serves some of the best naan I've ever had. That sounds divine. What do people usually eat naan with? It's often served with curries or as a side dish to other Indian meals. You can also try it with some butter or garlic on top. Oh, yum. I can't wait to give it a try. How do you usually eat naan yourself? Personally, I love to dip it in some seasoned olive oil or hummus. It's also great for making sandwiches or wraps with vegetables and meats. That's a great idea. I bet it would be perfect for a quick lunch or snack. Yeah, it's a very versatile and filling bread. I'm glad I introduced you to it. Thanks for the recommendation. I'll make sure to try it out soon. Good morning, B. Thanks for meeting me here. No problem. It's always nice to catch up with our authors. So, what brings you in today? I wanted to discuss my new book with you. I think it's something that would appeal to a wider audience. Great. Tell me more. It's a collection of humorous essays about my life experiences. I think it's relatable and will make people laugh. That sounds promising. Have you thought about the title and cover design? Yes, I was thinking of calling it Life's Little Jokes. As for the cover, I was thinking of something whimsical, maybe a cartoon. I like it. What about the target market? I think it would appeal to anyone who enjoys a good laugh, but especially to millennials and Gen Zers. Okay, that's good to know. Have you thought about a launch event? Yes, I was thinking of a comedy night with some local comedians. I think it would be a lot of fun. I agree. We can start working on the marketing plan and getting you some publicity. Perfect. I'm excited to see how it turns out. Me too. With your talent and our support, I'm sure it will be a hit. Hey, B. Have you heard about ISO 27001 backup? 
Well, I have heard about backups, but not sure about the ISO 27001 backup. It's like a backup plan, but comes with a certified seal of approval. Oh, that sounds fancy. So, what's the backup frequency like? It's done daily, weekly, and monthly, depending on the type of data. Wow, that's a lot of backups. Is it necessary? Well, it's like insurance for your data. You don't want to regret not having a backup when your system crashes. True that. What about the security of the backup data? What measures are taken? The backup data is encrypted and stored in a secure location, physically and digitally. It's protected like Fort Knox. That sounds impressive. Is it costly though? Not really. When compared to the possible loss of data, it's a smart investment. I get it. So, if we invest in the ISO 27001 backup, can we take the day off on the backup day? Haha, <laughs> I wish it was that easy. We still need to ensure that the backups are done properly. We'll just have an added peace of mind. I see. So, we'll have secure backups and sleep well at night. Sounds like a win-win to me. Exactly. It's better to be safe than sorry. Hi, can you help me exchange some currency? Sure, what currency do you want to exchange? I have some Japanese yen that I want to exchange for US dollars. Okay, how much yen do you have? About 100,000 yen. That's roughly $900. Do you have any preference for smaller or larger bills? Smaller bills would be easier to carry when traveling. Great, I can exchange your yen for $100 bills. Is that all right? Yes, that's perfect. Thank you. No problem. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Actually, do you have any recommendations for good local food around here? Absolutely. There's a great Chinese restaurant just a few blocks down. Their dumplings are amazing. That sounds delicious. I'll definitely check it out. Thanks again for your help. My pleasure. Have a great day and enjoy your trip. Hi there, B. How's your day going? Hey, A. Not too shabby. Just been working on a project to process some large datasets on the cloud. Oh, interesting. What kind of data are you dealing with? Mostly customer behavior patterns and demographic information for a marketing campaign. Ah, uh, I see. Have you found any challenges with processing the data on the cloud? Well, the sheer volume of data is certainly a challenge, but the cloud platform can handle it. The challenge is making sure our analysis is accurate and not affected by outliers. That's definitely important. Have you looked into any ways to optimize your analysis? Yes, we're experimenting with machine learning algorithms to filter out any outliers and improve the accuracy of our data. It's still a work in progress, though. That's exciting stuff. I've heard a lot about the potential of machine learning in data analysis. Absolutely. It's pretty fascinating stuff. How about you? What are you currently working on? I'm working on developing a predictive model for sales trends based on historical data. It's challenging, but exciting to see how accurate our predictions can be. Oh wow, that sounds really cool. Do you think your model will be helpful for businesses? Definitely. Being able to predict sales trends can help businesses make better decisions regarding inventory and forecasting. Yeah, that would be a game changer. Speaking of games, did you catch the latest NBA game last night? No, I missed it. Who won? The Lakers won in the fourth quarter. It was quite a game. Darn, I wish I had seen it. Maybe I can catch the highlights later. Yeah, definitely check it out. It was a close game and had a lot of exciting moments. Will do. It's always nice to take a break from work and catch up on some sports highlights. Absolutely. Sometimes, it's good to take a break and get inspired by something other than data. Hey B, have you thought about the latest trends in the smart home industry? Yes, I have been researching on the latest IoT devices and platforms available in the market. Great. I was wondering what features we can add to our smart home system. We could include voice-activated assistance and security surveillance cameras for better convenience and safety. That's an excellent idea. How about smart thermostats to save energy bills and automated lighting for added comfort? Yes, exactly. We can integrate these features with our system to provide our customers with more control over their homes. What about the interconnectivity between devices? Can we make them communicate with each other to create a seamless experience? Definitely. We can use protocols like Zigbee and Z-Wave to help devices communicate with one another in a more efficient manner. Nice, that sounds perfect. What about the compatibility issue? 
Should we make our system compatible with multiple other IoT devices? Of course. The more platforms, the better chances of attracting a wider audience. That's true. We could also expand our services to cover a wider area, like outdoor lighting and door locks. Absolutely, and we could also use machine learning and AI to help our smart home system learn from user behavior and create a more personalized experience. That's a fantastic idea, B. We should brainstorm more and note all the suggestions we have so far. Sounds good to me. Let's get back to work and make our smart home system a reality. Hi, B. It's great to see you. How are you doing today? Good day, A. I'm doing pretty well. Just checking on our financial reports and budget projections. How about you? I'm doing fine too. So, how are things looking so far for this quarter? Well, the good news is that our sales are up by 10% compared to last year, which is great. That's fantastic to hear. What about our expenses? Unfortunately, our expenses are up too, especially on utilities and employee wages. That doesn't sound too great. Do we have a plan for this? Yes, we're planning on implementing smarter energy-saving strategies as well as getting more revenue from our marketing campaigns. Those are some great strategies. What about our budget projections for the next quarter? We're currently aiming for a 5% increase in net profit, but there's still some work to do on that. Well, I'm sure with our teamwork and innovative ideas, we can push towards achieving our goals. Plus, we can always do with a little extra motivation by offering some incentives. You're right, A. Eh? It's always good to have some rewards to motivate the team. How about a free pizza party for the entire staff if we meet our target? Sounds like a great plan to me. After all, who doesn't love pizza, right? Exactly. Let's work together to make it happen. Definitely. It's great having an awesome colleague like you, B. Thanks for the chat. Likewise, A. Always a pleasure. Until next time. Hi there, I heard we're working on building a new finance data platform. As a database administrator, I'm curious about what kind of information we'll be handling. Yes, we are. It's going to be a big project. We'll be handling a wide range of customer transactions, investments, stock market data, and more. Wow, that sounds like a lot of sensitive information that we need to keep secure. What sort of security measures will be in place? Of course, security is a top priority. We'll be using a combination of access controls, encryption, and monitoring to ensure that all data is safe. That's great to hear. How about efficiency? What strategies are we considering for optimizing performance? One of the key strategies is using a distributed database system that can handle high volumes of transactions in real time. Additionally, we're looking at ways to minimize latency and ensure quick access to data. Sounds like a solid plan. What sort of tools and technologies will we be using for this project? We'll be using a mix of traditional relational databases as well as newer NoSQL databases that can handle unstructured data. Additionally, we'll be leveraging cloud infrastructure for scalability. Interesting. What types of challenges do you anticipate we might face during this project? One challenge that we'll need to overcome is the sheer volume of data we'll be handling. We'll also need to ensure that we're complying with all relevant regulations and standards. I see, those are definitely important considerations. Overall, it seems like this project will require a lot of collaboration and teamwork. Absolutely. We'll need to work closely with a number of teams, including developers, security experts, and compliance officers, to ensure that we're creating the best possible platform. Well, I'm definitely up for the challenge. It should be an exciting project to work on. Same here. I think we have a great team in place and I'm confident that we can create a platform that meets all of our needs. Good morning, B. How are you doing today? Good morning, A. I'm doing well, thank you. It's a beautiful day to work in the garden, isn't it? Yes, indeed. I'm excited to get started on some new designs. I noticed some bare spots near the bushes that could use some sprucing up. Ah, uh, yes. I've been meaning to add some new plants there. What do you have in mind? I was thinking of adding some colorful perennials like irises and daisies. And maybe some creeping flocks near the walkway to add some texture. That sounds like a great idea. And speaking of walkways, I noticed there's some weeds growing between the stones. Do you want me to take care of that? Yes, please. And while you're at it, could you also water the flower beds and trim the hedges? Sure thing. I'll get right on it. By the way, have you thought about adding a water feature to the garden? Actually, I have. I was thinking of a small pond with some goldfish and lily pads. What do you think? 
I love it. It would definitely add some tranquility to the garden. And speaking of tranquility, have you considered adding some wind chimes or bird feeders? Funny you should mention that, I was just looking at some wind chimes online. I think the sound of chimes and the breeze would be lovely. Definitely. Well, I better get started on those tasks. Thanks for the ideas, A. Hey. We'll have the most beautiful garden in the village. You're welcome, B. I can't wait to see the final result. Let's make it a garden paradise. Hey B, how's our building coming along? It's going great, A. Hey. We're making good progress. That's fantastic to hear. You guys are doing a great job. Thanks, A. Hey. We appreciate the encouragement. So, have you ever wanted to be an architect like me? Laughs, no way, A. Hey. I'll leave the designing to you. Laughs, fair enough. What's the toughest part of the job for you? Well, it's definitely the heavy lifting. My back gets pretty sore. I can imagine. I use my brain more than my muscles. Yeah, you're lucky like that. Hey, I try to keep up with cardio exercises. That's good, A. Hey. We don't want you getting out of shape on us. Laughs, thanks for the concern, B. You're a good friend. Anytime, A. Hey. You're the best boss we could ask for. Smiling, I appreciate that. Let's keep up the good work and make this building a beauty. You got it, A. We won't let you down. Hey B, have you thought about how we could design a website that provides real-time interaction between users? Hey A, I've been brainstorming some ideas. We could start by considering a chat room or forum feature that users could engage with in real time. That's a great start. How do you envision the interface for that? Well, we could have a live feed that would show the conversations happening at that moment and allow users to join in as they please. Nice, I like that. What about incorporating some gamification into the website? Absolutely, adding rewards or point systems to encourage engagement would be a smart move. Love that idea. What do you think about integrating video or voice calling capabilities? I think it's an excellent possibility. We could also consider live streaming certain events for users to join in on. Great suggestion. How about ensuring that the website is fully accessible on all devices? Definitely. We need to keep mobile devices and tablets in mind as well as desktops. Right. And we should also think about how we want to moderate the conversations happening within the chat room or forum feature. Agreed. We could have moderation tools in place that allow for users to report inappropriate behavior and have us monitor and remove troll-like behavior. Excellent point. Let's also make sure we have a solid backend that can handle a large number of users all engaged in real time at the same time. Yeah, we'll need a robust infrastructure to handle all of the data being sent back and forth. A reliable chat API would be a good start, and maybe we could use WebSockets for real-time communication. I couldn't agree more. And we should consider including notification systems to alert users of new messages or comments. Yes, and what about incorporating personalization options for users? So they can customize their experience? I think that's a fantastic idea. We could allow users to select themes, colors, and even add an avatar to their profiles. Awesome. And finally, let's make sure we do extensive testing across multiple devices, operating systems, and browsers. Totally agree. That way we can spot and fix any bugs as quickly as possible and make sure we're delivering the best user experience possible. Great discussion, B. I think we've got some solid ideas here that we can start implementing immediately. I agree, A. I can't wait to see how it all comes together. Hey B, have you ever tried a Cornish pasty before? No, I haven't. What's so special about it? Well, it's a type of savory pastry that originates from Cornwall in the UK. It's usually filled with beef, potatoes, onions, and Swedes. Swedes? You mean like people from Sweden? No, no, no. Swedes are actually a type of root vegetable, similar to turnips. Ah, uh, gotcha. So, what's the best way to eat one? Honestly, you can't go wrong with a warm Cornish pasty straight out of the oven. The pastry is flaky and the filling is steaming hot. That sounds delicious. Are there any other fillings besides beef? Oh yeah, you can find all sorts of fillings these days, from chicken curry to cheese and onion. They even have vegetarian and vegan options. Wow, I had no idea. I'll definitely have to try one next time I'm in the UK. Absolutely. And if you're feeling adventurous, you can even try making one at home. There are plenty of recipes online. I might just have to do that. Thanks for the recommendation, eh? Hey. Of course. Let me know how it goes. 
Maybe we can have a Cornish pasty party sometime. Sounds like a plan. Bring on the pastry goodness. Hi, I'm looking for some new pants. Do you have any recommendations, B? Sure, we have a variety of styles. Do you prefer something casual or dressy? I need something that can be dressed up or down. Maybe a comfortable pant I can wear to the office or on the weekends? How about these chinos? They're made of a breathable fabric and come in a variety of colors. Oh, those look great. What size do I need? Let me measure you real quick. Looks like you'll need a size 32 waist and a regular inseam. Awesome, thanks. Do they come in any fun colors? We have them in navy, khaki, olive green, and even a burnt orange. Hmm, the burnt orange sounds interesting. Can I try them on? Absolutely, the fitting rooms are just over there. Let me know what you think. How do they feel? They're so comfortable. And the color is perfect for fall. Glad you like them. Will you be purchasing them today? Definitely. Thank you so much for your help. It was my pleasure. Do you need any other assistance today? No, that's all for now. Thanks again. You're welcome. Have a great day. Hey there, nice to meet you. I'm A, the photographer. Hey A, I'm B, the climber. Glad to meet you too. So, have you climbed in Blue Mountains before? Yes, I have. I love challenging myself here. Great. I'm excited to capture some amazing shots of you climbing today. I'm excited too. I hope I can make it an interesting shoot for you. Absolutely. Do you have a favorite spot or route that you would like us to focus on? Hmm, how about the Prince of Darkness route? It's a challenging one and the view is just stunning. Wow, I've heard of that one, but I haven't had the chance to capture it on camera. Let's go for it. All right, let's gear up and get started. Got it. Just be careful up there, safety comes first. Don't worry, I'm an experienced climber. I always put safety first. Awesome, that's great to hear. I'm confident we'll get some fantastic shots today. This climb is tricky, but I'm doing my best. How do the photos look? Amazing. You look fearless up there, and the scenery makes for a perfect backdrop. That's great to hear. I can't wait to see the final shots. Me too. Let's finish up this shoot and head back. Sounds good. Thanks for capturing some awesome shots today, eh? No problem. It was a pleasure working with you.